So, hi everyone. This is just going to be Loki and I because Sin is busy. Watch, she's going to like edit her voice on top of this while we're ta- while we're chatting and stuff. She'll just be like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. And just be like, pretend like she was there, just like edit her. I wouldn't put it past her. <laughs> she's just being like, yep, we're the snack covenant still. Well, it's just like audio of her chewing, possibly. So, we are talking about Dark Souls 2. Translations. Yeah. 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 So we've we've talked a lot about one and three a lot on with me. So I thought, hey, there was a planned Dark Souls two chat we were supposed to have, and that's still pending. <laughs> I I guess we should first give like the the sort of say the nice things before we we, we talk shit about this. <laughs> um, the Dark Souls two got a better localization than Dark Souls one and Demon Souls, like. I I've, I think I said it like probably one of my first times coming on here that it's it's the, like the game the game the localizations get better with each iteration right. overall. Demon Souls kind of stayed the same with Dark Souls one. It was just the script got bigger with one. Yep. Um, the quality didn't improve. Then two, they've imp- they improved it quite a bit, and then it gets to met quality by three. But the fact it's met quality by three should give you an idea of what we're working with here. So, like, um, by by quality, you mean, like, the accuracy, basically. Yeah, yes. Like, I know everyone's got their... I'm sure everyone, including myself, has lines they love in the localization. And I'm not disputing people for saying liking... Like, you could... It's like, everyone can like things whether they're good or bad. It has nothing to do with their quality. Um, what I'm trying to say is that there are problems in every soul script, some worse than others. And they're... They all... All of them have pretty major problems it's just a sort of a, a matter of frequency or severity um yeah it's, it's something that we talked about um another time you were on was just the way that they tell stories with such minimal amounts of text mm-hmm. that like just one noun or one verb being slightly off can change an entire story yes it's very important and because of how japanese is it can be both more clarifying and more vague and it's sort it's different in yeah. english and just it's just an enti- it's an entirely different language so there are things that english can say or put in a better way and there are things that just in the original japanese it just works and you should just translate it straight right a lot of times though we we know and we've talked about this before is that the localizers seem to have this this habit of sign of thinking they're their own Shakespeare and it's this this is their own personal art project. Right. So they start getting a little bit creative and start creating word salads and it can at best sometimes change characterizations and at worst it completely butchers characters and makes it completely incomprehensible. And that happens a lot in aspects of Dark Souls 2. So it's not like the quest is completely ruined or anything. I think most people get the basic ideas pretty fine. Yeah. The issue is that a lot of it, there's not a lot of straightforward clarity in the English script. No. Um, on what's going on, and there's no consistency in some of the terminology throughout the script. So there's a lot of references um, that are lost in translation. And then many of those other references that are in the Japanese script. Sometimes they get mixed up with different references that come from other parts of the localization. So it becomes this kind of big mess. Right, yeah, because um, from memory, they had, I think, two or three different translation companies working on it. Yeah, Cause you, you could see that yeah. in, like, say, like, there's like one of the gods... Um, in Dark Souls 2, it's the greed god, and he, or the money god, or whatever, and he's supposed to be called Z- Zandro, basically, Zandoro is the, the Japanese. Right. Um, and that's in one of the item descriptions, but then in, it's like in one of the, the I'm pretty sure it's one of the snake rings. Yeah, it's the ring. They call him Zindir, I think. Yeah, in one ring he's called Zandro, and the other he's called Zinder. So, it's very obvious that it's supposed to be the same god, but they forgot to have their editor pick which one they were going to go with for a name. <laughs> we should also point out that, like, you're going off the Scholar of the First Sin script? Yeah, for the most part. there I will reference some other items, but for the most part we're going to be working with Scholar, so we'll have Aldia and everyone else in it. Yeah, so just, like, for clarity, because some people might not know that the script was rewritten for Scholar. Like, not, not, not a massive rewrite, but there were parts of it that were sort of amended. Yes, there was an uh, there was a certain I'm not sure if it was for scholar specifically or it was just an, a game update, but there was a point in it where they basically 
updated descriptions in both the Japanese and English yeah. scripts. So the idea was basically to take some older items, and most of it seems to have been done with the intent of fixing their lore, <laughs> yeah. because of how many, especially after the DLCs, and they added those, they just they wanted to kind of make them more cohesive. And some of it seems like they've had it planned from the start, um, with some of the implications. They just didn't do a good job conveying it, and then they decided, oh, we'll we'll make it more obvious because what else are we gonna do? And then. There's other aspects where it seems like they, they, they change things to fix plot holes. For example, a good example is with Nishandra, where it references how she was the smallest fragment, so she came there first. But chronologically, she's like the latest to yeah. be involved in anything relevant. So they, they kind of remove that from the description line. Right. Um, with the implication that it's kind of like out of there. and. That, which makes it hard because there's some lines that still work regardless. Like, it's just sort of a change to just, like, change the information. It doesn't invalidate, say, the previous version. But then there's some like that which do, and it's kind of... And you can kind of tell it's it's done to help fix it. Yeah. I've been playing through uh, Bloodborne on 1.0, and it's kind of a similar deal. Where there's just... A, not a huge amount, but, like, chunks of that script are changed literally in a patch. <laughs> But at least, like at least in that case, it was a day one patch, not like yeah. a year into release. Yeah. So uh, I guess like yeah. we'll start. We're gonna do this basically. Um, the way you've got it written out is it's like the sort of main quest of the game chronologically. Yeah. So like intro, Emerald Herald, uh, Aldia, Vendrick, Nishandra, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we'll start with the actual main quest, because some people do get a bit confused on this, and just for clarity's sake, for those that, that, that do on, like, what's going on with the opening, and, like, some people go into this giant tirade about the metaphorical implications or whatever, but it's a pretty simple and straightforward. So if we can start with the, tra with the trailer, then. Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. Did you see it in a dream that Lost Land? So it's pretty straightforward here. At the beginning of it, we basically hear the old woman speaking to the player. So the idea is, is that what we see later on is our character going through a, a, a forest in rain. And what happens is, is he's basically dealing with, he's sort of dealing with the elements, or she is dealing with the elements. But then the character seems to come upon a house in the middle of this forest. And we know that it's this forest because the same scene of the rain can be seen out the window during one of the shots. So we know, so we can infer from that that we, that what happened was we were going through, we fell, we're dealing with the elements, we're taking shelter from the rain in this random cabin in the woods, because you know, that totally isn't the start of a horror film. So you come in and there's this, this nice old woman working on the spindle and all that, and she's just being kind of creepy, but then like, you're, you're ready to start heading out, kind of. But then right before you leave, the woman tells you, oh, did you see it in a dream, that I lost land in a dream? So this tells us already that the woman no the woman has we're probably not the first person who's had this dream and who has this woman has come across with that dream and, and that she's aware of it and that she's complete and that she sort of has the inference that that's why we're traveling through here and the fact that she knows th about our dream stop we stop and we're like okay what's going on here so then we move on to the next part well do you want to um like note that the woman with the with yeah. the who's spinning like that's like a witch motif thing you'll you'll yeah. see it in Japanese it stuff the idea of like the old woman spinning the thread yeah it's sort of this it's it's sort of trying to give this imagery that um um I don't know want, want to call her say an auger but like um uh sort of like that mysti like sort of like that that typical like fairy tale witch who sort of knows every who knows everything and is going to help you on your journey like that's the aura they're trying to go with her the the reason i'm bringing it up is because specifically yeah. uh there's a kurosawa film called throne of blood that has like a very very similar scene in it and a lot of people have compared the two and they think it's actually like it, it's meant to be a direct reference to throne of blood yeah. But it's more broad than that. It's, it's yeah, and and one of the other important things to note about is that the character is later implied to be a firekeeper and one of the sisters of the old woman we meet later. So the idea is we have one of the firekeepers who have been scattered around and have kind of reti she's retired to this cabin for whatever re reason she has. Maybe she wants to help out with pe with undead like us. Who knows? But that's a separate separate. That's not important to this. Um, so we move on to the next line. 
A place where souls may mend your ailing mind. There seems to be a power called the soul that can call back man's reason there. So, what's interesting is that apparently in the Dark Souls 2 timeline of setting, the existence and concept of the soul as the source of life, among other things, is sort of foreign in, in the, the, the DS2 era. In the, in the area we're in, at least. It's sort of this idea that that right. the soul is sort of this like kind of unique concept, and which is especially interesting because there's a lot of talk about characters and afterlifes and things in the lore. Like humans have sort of created their own more conventional religions compared to how it was in Dark Souls One, where it's like, oh hey, we have our god, and they just live like North. <laughs> so it's a bit interesting that they don't have a concept of the soul really, and that the whole and this seems to go into the idea of the fact that stuff about like they know about the first flame, but they don't really know what it is or what the history to the world is at this point. And of course the soul is, of course we, we need souls in order to kind of keep ourselves sane. Well, do you want to talk about like just the soul thing for a second? Sure. Because like the way that souls are explained in the Dark Souls games is there, and also Demon Souls, they're just like a strange sort of energy that's found yeah. that's called soul. It's not like if you took soul in the meaning that like most Westerners take it, you're in weird situations where it's like, why does the dragon have 47,000 souls? Yeah. And the answer is like, that's not literally the soul. It's just like, it's like the energy or the life force of the dragon. The idea is that it's the power of disparity itself. Yeah. Like when the first flame came into existence, we suddenly have soul. Like the suddenly there was this great outpouring of souls. And the souls had this byproduct that when given will... They became not just power, but the power of this thing called life. Sort of, the moment a soul gained a will, it was alive. It acted, it had sort of these parameters to act independently of an external source. Um, which is kind of a weird way to think about existence, but like, we're, let's not get too cosmological there. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, the the entire notion of the soul being used as sort of the like you get a soul and then when you die you just become like this kind of ghostly spirit that's it's yeah. sort of an outgrowth of that and demon souls and dark souls have this interesting distinction for their power sources where like the soul in demon souls is sort of just the source of reason so you can theor so you can lose your soul but still be alive you'll just be a zombie and then dark yeah, souls one soul stuff yeah. yeah then in dark souls one they play on that by saying that everything that has a soul is in some is has some degree of of life to it because yeah. the soul is the source of life itself it's not just the source of your consciousness um and they that's how they kind of play with it and kind of first hint at how the undead curse isn't what you like for people coming from demon souls it's not the undead curse isn't functioning the same way as you might think how it worked with the uh, the soul starved and demon souls and that's sort of your first hint at you there's something deeper going on here uh and then like uh, our characters has had this dream of drang lake is now going after this power called soul which can supposedly help them stay sane because they're slowly going mad and that's brought up by the woman immediately after that you will lose everything once branded the symbol of the curse an augur of darkness okay they've lost anything and everything humans the seal appeared on it's proof of the curse the seal of dark so it's sort of this idea the seal idea is kind of like think of it like say like the the like the cow iron branding type of seal like kind of this yeah. engraved marking that's sort of in etched in into you of course referring to the dark sign that's on the flesh yeah yeah the word for the engraved aspect of the seal is the same used for the the like the seal aspect is same thing used for the dark sign so like yeah the idea of the dark sign is it's a proof it's a sign it's some physical visible evidence of what's going on with you let's say yeah well they they say that in dark souls one as well at the beginning yeah. like the the young dead are the carriers of the accursed dark sign yeah that's how they know yeah and in the japanese yeah. script they call it the dark ring so it's the idea um but the what japanese website in dark souls one does refer to it as the sign of the dark aka dark sign so there was some overlap there yeah well D dark souls was called dark ring at one point in development 
Like there's a this Oh, that's an interesting There's a name. trailer. I think it's like one of the very first trailers. Like it's it's literally called Dark Ring in the same way that Bloodborne's called Project Beast. Oh, I see. All right, moving on. <laughs> your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. The past, the future, and even light. Eventually, once you can't remember even what you've lost, you'll become something that's not human. Just a beast that greedily devours souls, a hollow. So, the one, there's this notion of greedily, which, of course, is trying to play into the nature of the dark aspect. Right. Um, but we, we basically are getting through the... Uh, she's basically going through the idea that y you're slowly going crazy, basically. Like, even if you, like, have... Like, you're perfectly good, you never die or anything. Y you're always dealing with this this unsetting madness. And we see this already... We had saw seen this in Dark Souls 1 with, say, the undead merchant. Um, he, he The undead merchants, they were getting close to hollows, and they were kind of a little kooky in the head. One of them's got this imaginary dog he's petting, and, <laughs> like, um, then there's, of course, um, the crestfallen merchant from the first game who had, he was also kind of dealing with his own crazy, he was kind of also kind of dealing with his own problems. And we have some cut dialogue, which indicates they were originally planning to have him eventually go yeah, crazy and, and attack. Yeah. 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 But we see now this idea that, okay, so you you have this memory of... And I'm tr I am tried to find the item before we set up for this, but I couldn't. Yeah. I'll bring it up next time I come on here and I find it. Um, but there's this reference to... Well, there's been debate about, okay, is that supposed to be, say, your wife and child? Well, that doesn't work if you're a female character. Um, what happens... So it's supposed to be that you're, you're, you're... It's you, a memory of you with your mother. And that's sort of like your earliest memory, and it's fading away. Um, it's referenced in one of the items that, um, basically, like, just casually talking about that. So, just for some clarification there. Um, but the idea is basically, okay, we're slowly going to lose ourselves, and we're already doing so. So we've got to kind of get, find this, we got to find this place which is promising to give us the power to basically keep being ourselves. Um, and then we move, and then she describes the place we're going to. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? Now, this is a part that kind of gets a little... This is where one of the first little problems with the script in that... Um, some people start kind of going it have gone into tangents about when she's saying like perhaps you're familiar know how could you be like we're supposed to like as if this is supposed to reference like we've been here before like yeah. we've gone here before and we've got like this this history with Drang like we yeah, don't this, know about this confused me a lot I think I'll probably end up going into it later on yeah but yeah this isn't actually the case surprisingly enough <laughs> what a surprise um, what it actually says is a land to the far north Beyond a noble wall, a country of antiquity, once built in the name of a great king. Its name back then was Dranglig, if I recall correctly. You ought to already know of it. No, it's fine even if you don't. So what she's actually trying to get at is that, one, there's this abstract reference to this noble wall, and it's never clarified exactly. It seems to be like this sort of, like Dranglig is almost sanctioned off somehow, either physically or metaphysically. Um, in this, and, and it's in this sort of, and it's sort of this land that's been in decay for a while, and we see that it's, it's not hard for people to travel to it, even just regularly walking, like, well, there's reference to mountains and things like that, so maybe it's just that it's sort of, you kind of got to go through the treacherous course, well, it seems like a lot of characters died and became undead because of the trek, so, <laughs> so, it might be just that, <laughs> and then, anyway, the point is, is that there's a reference to, of course, the ki the king who built the kingdom, um, but 
at the very end, it's like, you ought to already know of it, so, but and now it's fine if you don't. So what she, she's not trying to say anything deeper, she's just saying, you know, this was like a big deal once. It should be this big place, like, you should know, like, you should have heard the stories about Drang Lake at one point. But it's like, ah, it doesn't really matter. Like, it, it's like, it's the, yeah, if you haven't, it's fine, it doesn't matter. So it's a really kind of a pointless, a pointless little line there in and of itself by the character's own admission. Um, so there's nothing really deeper to, to think about it. So when they talk about uh, a great king, it's built in the name of the great king, are they referring to Vendrick? Or... Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Because keep in mind, the word for name in Japanese yeah. is also used for stuff like reputation and right. and yep. titles and things like yeah. that. So the idea mm. being is that um, uh, basically that Ven- that Vendrick was the one who established it, and like right. he 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 sort of put his his mark on, on he put his mark on on ma- on making that country, and that's why the land is now that's why the land is now known as Drang Lake, though it's gone by other names for other people in other countries before right. that have been to the continent. To again for clarification on the noble wall, there's this sort of this idea again, it's it's not sort of noble in terms of like there's something like elevated or, or special. Like she's giving she's honoring this so called wall. Right. Um she's she's like elevating it in some in some respects in the in the language. But it's very difficult not not to translate but to infer what it means specifically. Right. It's a very vague word. Yeah, it's a very and, vague word. And we word. never we never see the wall. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm saying maybe it's yeah. the mount, maybe it's the mountain ranges. Maybe there's yeah. a lot of things we could go with on what it's supposed to be, and that's that's something that fans can fairly speculate about. Yeah, it, um, it's almost it's, um, similar to the Fisher and Demon Souls, where the Boletari is surrounded by the fog, and then you have to get in through the the single. Because f- yeah. I mean, we'll get to it later on, but there is a scene that sort of makes it look like you're going through a portal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one day. You will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. So a lot of people look at that last line and it's like, okay, so I'm, um, we're, we're, we're sort of like unconsciously being yeah, drawn there. And, that's how, and it's true we're yeah. being, yeah, that's how a lot of, and it's true, we are being drawn there, but it's because of our dream, not because of some unconscious, un, undefined force. And the, the 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 Japanese clarifies this quite nicely with, you will arrive at its ruined gates whether you desire to or not. So it's not a ma- mm. So it's not that we we don't know why the hell we're going here. We're consciously choosing and arriving there. But the thing is that our quote unquote choice isn't really a choice because the options are either you go there to get the power of the soul to stay sane. Or you basically die physically or mentally. Yeah. You choose. There's really no other option. And that's sort of the point. This is sort of the setting tone for the theme because, well, particularly with Scholar, because one pretty much had no plot or anything to really do besides let's just redo the Link the Fire story. Right. Um, with Aldia, it becomes a point of framing of what is it that you desire? The point is that you are doing all these things because you have to, because you're told to, because these you really don't have many options otherwise. But what is your personal wishes and what do you want to do? Which is sort of the point they're getting at. Of course, the game has still like no options compared to some of the others, but that's neither here nor there. You're basically, you're, she's basically, the basically she's smiling kind of the same reason the old women laugh at you is it's, you kind of have no choice. You're kind of a slave to the system in this case, because it's the only way for you to have any halfway decent hope of some form of salvation. Like a moth drawn to a flame, your wings will burn in anguish. After time. And then like a winged insect, insect captivated by light, you'll burn yourself many, many times over. Now the light illusion is of course important, and the fire of course, because the whole first flame, the whole distracted by the light, etc. That, that again, it's reiterating a point from the previous game. And they, of course, they're also trying to play up the idea you're going to die a lot in this yeah. game because that's been their mark. That was their marketing shtick because of how well prepare to die prepare edition. Prepare to went. die. Yeah. Which, by the way, that's actually only a l- English thing. So they kind of, they, it's sort of something the the, the company's retroactively brought over for yeah, two well, in, in the Japanese it's, marketing. It's, got, and it's got that trophy called "This is Dark Souls" that you yeah, get for dying that. the first time, and it's like, come on. 
it's the it's that it's that it, it's that edgy yeah it's that edgy shit especially since like it's it's sort of just it's like on my on my original copy it's like visit the fire keeper and then like 88 minutes later i get this is dark souls by jumping off a cliff <laughs> it's not really this sort of epic thing i think they were hoping for so yeah when, when they talk about the winged insects they they say that they don't say moth right I'm trying to. Yes, they don't say moth specifically. Yeah, because I'm thinking because like I'm I can I'm picturing the scene and it's like cicadas or fireflies or something around this tree. Yeah, they're trying to go. They went. They, they the localization probably went with moth drawn to a flame because it's a very easy illusion. Yeah, yeah, it's an expression we're familiar with. Yeah. Yeah, and like here's one of the thing that's also worth noting is that the website version puts it in a slightly, like, it kind of reor- like, because it doesn't frame things from the old woman's perspective, it just sort of takes a lot of her words and- into a proper summary of the premise. Right. Um, and one of the points, of course, is that we do, we are captivated by the light as the insect, and we're going there whether we desire to or not, and that's yeah. the point of the, the insect illusion, is that we kind of, we just have to. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed. Well, they won't be forgiven. The cursed. So the point is being is that you're gonna be burned. You're burn yourself many more times. It's like you're you're cursed. So you kind of just gotta suck it up. It's like you deserve this, basically. Yeah. That's sort of the 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 kind of the connotation she's going for. You're just you're you're sort of this you're this unholy monster that's impermissible. So whatever suffering you take on your journey is sort of tot it's it's fine. There's nothing wrong. It's like it's you you just you, you you should have it. Okay, so we get that and we get that line. So we've clarified it's like okay, so we've just met this woman. It's like we were going through a forest on our journey. We're dealing a lot we we're dealing with a lot of shit. This woman then decides she's going to lead us and tell us like um we have no choice in the matter and we we have no even guarantee or knowledge of what the hell we're really getting into. And then we finally we meet the old women and they sort of help us from going completely insane before we we even uh, make it there. But before that, there's this transition where you transition to underwater and you see that there's all these corpse, these skeletal corpses lying at the bottom of the lake. And the spirits then start swirling around and they create a sort of portal in the water. And it takes us to sort of this, what's called the, the thing between, which is supposed to Things be. betwixt, yeah. Yeah. It's sort of this kind of limbo space transitioning yeah. between the barrier from the, from the world of Man We're to, to Drang Lake. So you think that like that did literally happen? Yeah. Yes. From what I can tell, right. from, from what I can yeah. tell, it seems to be. Again, this is areas where even the Japanese community yeah. has some talk because it's not something that th- is addressed directly again. But from what yeah. it's talked about, um, like the way that Milibeth and others talk about it, this is sort of a a actual sort of space between, like a transition space. Yeah. That That's we're why going it's through. Betwixt, yeah. 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 And the idea being yeah. is that we are supposed to be sort of we've we've taken sort of this supernatural means um to this land and as we progress through it it'll we move out and we finally enter into Drang Lake prop. Yeah. Because I like myself and like a lot of other people were sort of taking that intro as partially like not metaphorical but almost like a like a dream, like fractured memories. Mm-hmm. So things like when, when it talks about the memory of your we now say, your mother fading away, and it's like you see her face melt into wax. Mm-hmm. And you the way that, like, you see your character sort of throw themselves into this abyss, and when you look into the water, you can see, like, reflected is another kingdom that's sort of ruined on the surface and everything. Mm-hmm. But we were just sort of like, yeah, this is, this is like, yeah. Yeah, in the actual water, you kind of see that the ruins are complete in the reflection of the water. Yeah, so we were like, eh, this is like, it's hard to tell because it's Dark Souls, it's everything, it's, this could technically really happen in it. I mean, it happens in Bloodborne as well. Well, the thing is that Dark Souls 2, this same game introduces these kind of fire bugs that yeah, are the soothing bugs. the dead, the bright bugs that soothe the dead and things like that. Oh, yeah, 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 the other ones, yeah, the fireflies. So the idea that these sort of corpse, these corpses that were left, bu- them and their souls being left behind, and perhaps they were resentful or whatever, they're being cursed, that the idea of these bright bugs may be um, bringing them forth or rousing them from their their inactive state is something that's quite possible, um, the question then, of course, is where? What are the ruins, or where are they? 
Um, and what what is the portal doing? Like, is it a time traveling portal? Is it just a spatial portal? Um, because it seems to indicate that we're still in the present day, even when we're in Drang Lake and things like that. Like, we haven't like gone back in time. Um, so then, sort of, how far have we gone? Is was this sort of just like a convenient waypoint that we go to? Like, there's a lot of things that are not clarified about this, and I don't know if anyone's been able to match the architecture of the ruins to places in the well, Drang. One of the <laughs> The thing is, there, there was a lot of stuff rendered, like, not just in that intro, but also in early trailers, mm-hmm. where they rendered a bunch of stuff and then it, it didn't show up in the game. And then it turned out, like, three years later that there's all these, like, unused map and object files that actually do represent those things. So, mm-hmm. it's possible that that, like, whirlpool and the ruins and everything, that may actually have been a map at some point and it's just been removed. Mm-hmm. And that's that's one of the problems. We've talked about this before with the early trailers and how a lot of things these these things become subject to development. Like yeah. Dark Souls One's perhaps the only one that was literally just what ha- what like exactly how things ended up in the final game. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not out yet. It'll be out, I guess, when this comes out. But Sin and I recorded something about Dark Souls Two cut stuff that goes into that a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, like the uh, the original plan for the sort of tutorial things betwixt area was it looks like that was partially waterlogged so Mm -hmm. it may have been like a literal event yeah yeah Alrighty. so then let's let's move now that we've gotten through that let's move on now to the actual the real the real main quest now that we've gone through the primer and that's we get to talk about the emerald herald and some of the things that go on from there there seek seek lest so we go from the things betwixt into Majula. Now we're kind of like, okay, we're in this new world. We're trying to get our 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 setting because it's like we still don't really know what we're doing in this game beyond we're there to try to keep ourselves sane. Like that's our right. motivation. It's not re- that's kind of it. Um, but then we meet the Herald, and this is where the localization starts having real problems. Um, ah, okay. Because <laughs> we start with Emerald Herald right off the bat. Are you? The next monarch. Are you the one who links? So right from the start, you were supposed to get a clear... Okay, right, linker, fire linker, okay. Yeah. The idea, obviously, is that they were going for... You're going to become the king of kindling, the soul of the, 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 the lord of cinder, and that they were going for something like that, but because of how vaguely they worded it, it doesn't come off as clear in, in, compared to, hey, are you the linker? It's like, oh, okay. So we're 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 supposed to we're supposed to be going on this first flame mission, which is a big problem because a lot of people are like, oh, suddenly at the end of the game they're talking about the first flame and, and shit. It's like, okay, when was that about this? <laughs> um, and it's like, no, from the start it was, should have been clear that's what this was about. Bearer of the curse, I will remain by your side till this frail hope shatters. Take this with you. May it ease your journey. Go on and see the king. He who made Drangleg what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrick. Person clad in the curse, I shall always be close by until that small hope breaks. Take this. It'll be of help for you and for your travels. Acquire power and meet the king, the one who once re- revitalized this drang leg and approached the source of the soul, King Van Clad. So here's the thing that, again, it, it helps, it's much more clear here. So the first part's it's like, okay, so she just wants to stay with, where she's going to stay with us basically as long as we're able, we're willing and able. Yeah. But then she starts, okay, so it's not go on and see the king, it's acquire power and meet the king. So you got to get strong first. But once you get yeah. strong, you got to go meet the king. Okay, so that's now we've got a clarity on what we we've got to do. We're not going to become Vendrick's successor or whatever. We're just coming in. We're supposed to be the fire linking, and we got to get the power to meet the king in order to get to the fire linking. Um, now the the, the of course the curveball is it's not that he, we're meeting the the king of kindling like we did in Dark Souls One with Gwyn or anything like that. It's we got to meet Vendrick. Right. But the thing that's notable about this is that in the, the the English localization, they go, he who peered at the essence of the soul. It's like, um, okay, what's that supposed to mean? Um, <laughs> but then the the Japanese, though, is very clear. It's he and approach the source of the soul. So what it's saying is that 
the soul, the, as we mentioned earlier, the source of the souls is the first flame. First flame right. cre- brought disparity, and that was represented by souls. That was the great outburst of power. So the fact that it's saying the source of the soul is your first clue in that, okay, so he who he was approaching the first flame. Okay, so that's why we gotta meet him, because, you know, he's gone and seen the first flame, so he's supposed to, like, be kind of like our, give us the yeah. sort of directions on what we gotta do in order to become the linker. So yeah. again, just that first line, we know exactly what the premise of this plot is. And the localization <laughs> fucked it up. <laughs> should also point out, just for the clarity, in case people don't know, uh, the Japanese script and English script use totally different names for Vendrick, Nishandra, and Aldia. Yes. So if you hear Vanclad, Dunashandra, and Andil, that's Vendrick, Nishandra, Aldia. Yeah. yeah. Dunashandra's the <laughs> dumbest of the lot, like... <sighs> We were well, yeah, so cause... close to greatness, and then you fucked it up. <laughs> we we were talking about this the other day, like off camera. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> like y- you do prefer the the English names for those characters. Oh yes, I do. Like yeah. Th- like I don't want people to misunderstand and think I'm like anti local. I'm like one of those people who are like ah. The- Kikaku means plan. Kikaku means plan. Like I I no no. I I'm a huge fan of localizations. I just like them done right and good. <laughs> Because, uh, because this may sound crazy, but I yeah I learn Japanese, but like I prefer my native tongue. <laughs> so yeah. like I wa- so like for crazy for a lot of, for a lot of anime fans out there, I watch a lot of dubs. In fact, I mostly watch dubs. Um, I w- I I still watch. I will listen to a lot of things in the original language and watch a lot of things in the original language. But like if there's some if there's a good dub, I'll take that that in English, which is what yeah. makes me mad when this game, which only has a dub, um. And has this localized script that is so flawed and so problematic, it causes it, it ruins the, it's. Well, it's. I mean, this is one of the many criticisms levied at Dark Souls Two is how it f- structures and handles its main quest, and part of it's just intrinsic to the game, but part of it's just the localization really not being straightforward and upfront about what the fuck it's about. Bearer of the curse. Seek misery, for misery will lead you to greater, stronger souls. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. Person clad in the curse, seek hardship, great power. That is the result of hardship. Meeting the king shan't come true as a fading soul. So it's largely the same, but this is an important thing. is The word for hardship, or as they call it here in this line, because they change it up so much, misery. Now this is important, because kunan, hardship in this case, is sort of this idea that difficulties, tr- suffering, you can translate it as trial, but there's another word that's more appropriate to that in this case. But So we'll focus on hardship as being our translation, because the idea is you have to go through very difficulties to get stronger. Um, it's like, you can't just, you're not going to just suddenly become this amazingly powerful being. You kind of got to, well, unless you're New Game Plus, but shh. The idea is that you have to get through it, and this is referenced a lot, is this idea of Seek your it's like go through these hardships go through these these trials and tribulations because at the end of all your difficulties You're gonna have you're gonna have the power and you're gonna reach the goal bearer of the curse Seek those whose names are unutterable the four endowed with immense souls Their souls will serve as beacons Once you have found them return here to me so that hope will not fade away. Aim for those whose names were forbidden, the four who possess strong souls. They will become a guide for your travels. If granted, please return here, so that the hope within you won't be eradicated. So I don't know about that. So for just that last line where it says, so that hope will not fade away, I guess they're just trying to be a little artistic, but I'll be honest, I was a little confused the first time I, I heard that. Right. Um, because the script is like, okay, so that the hope within you, it's like, okay, yeah. I didn't know, like, what, like, are we gonna, like, destroy, like, all hope in the yeah, universe like, or something? Yeah, help me, chosen undead, you are my only hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, first off, the, the, you know, this is talked about again with, I forget what the soul name is in the localization, but something like that, like, you don't say it, but the idea is, like, they're, like, there's, like, this, they're kind of, like, the, ta- like, the names are kind of taboo, and they're kind of been forgotten yeah, as a result. Yeah. Um... And these are, of course, referring to um, Seath, Nito, Isolith, and Gwyn. Gwyn, yeah. 
So we we kind of we get to go through. It's like okay, we have the four strands because apparently <laughs> four kings didn't make the cut. <laughs> they were too. <laughs> well, so the idea here is that we're, we're we're trying to find the souls then in order to get stronger. Sort of similar to Dark Souls one. The idea yeah. was okay. So there's been many attempt. There's been many iterations of the trial, and for this iteration, it's like instead of going through so many problems to open the damn door, let's just freaking get these strong souls that. Are happen to be in the area anyway. Yeah. You you it'll be a great trial to prove you're strong enough in the first place, and by getting them, you actually will get stronger. So yeah. Hey, win win. Yeah. The game the game takes that kind of more literally than Dark Souls One does, where you need a strong soul, so you can get the four souls, or you can just get a whole lot of regular souls, and that'll open it as well. Yeah. In Dark Souls One, the like the souls are kind of like. A, a measuring scale, a measuring scale to prove how strong you've been. Like they're supposed to be. The idea was the Lord Vessel was going to measure you compared to Gwyn, and the idea was how many souls you could collect and put in the vessel. And it's like, okay, you yeah. get four really strong pieces of Lord Soul, like Lord Souls or pieces of Lord Souls. It's like, okay, you've now matched Gwyn's Almighty Soul, so now you can go through the gate and you're good. Um, and it's like you've proven you're strong enough. And then in Dark Souls Two, it's just like. Yeah, they're they're also in the area, but like, hey, if you if, if if you're strong, you can just like open it anyway. Yeah. Bearer of the curse. Seek souls, larger, more powerful souls. Seek the king. That is the only way. Lest this land swallow you whole, as it has so many others. Person clad in the curse seeks souls, stronger, greater souls. That alone is the only way. Other land, this land will swallow you mercilessly and without exception. So the idea is that we're we're ne we're never we're never gonna get out of here if we're if we're if we're weak. We've gotta do this and we gotta be strong. And it plays again on the idea of you don't really have a choice. And then she talks about, the, of course, the castle. Over the hill and past the forest is the king's castle, where a man peered straight into the essence of the soul. But whatever came of it. Over the hill and through the forest to grandmother's house we go now, um, is the king's castle. The one who approached the source of the soul was there, but it's now already. So the idea is she's not, like, unsure, like, when she says, but whatever came of it, what she means is, like, okay, but it's already gone. Like, it's, 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 it's kind of, right. it's ruined, basically. It's abandoned. It's empty. Again, she's not, like, sort of questioning it, especially since the later reveal is that she's from that time. She's kind of been around for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um... So that's kind of notable. Then, but this this is basically her setting. We've now set up the quest. Okay, so we've got to find Vendrick. In order to find Vendrick, we've got to get these stronger souls. And by getting those stronger souls, we'll be able to go to his castle. Okay, so we got to do these things. So the quest is pretty straightforward in that regard. Then we go through and we kill each of the four. And after we've killed each of the four, we finally get to the last primal bonfire that we would use to get out. Um. And that's where we meet Aldia. No one has come this far. Not for a very long while. Young Harlow, do you wish to shed this curse? Then accept the fate of your ilk and face the trials that await you. Unless you have already joined the Crestfallen. <laughs> What, when was the last time someone that arrived here appeared? Hollow, do you desire to try passing the curse? Then, challenge the trials. That is a mission that was imposed on Hollows. Unless you're a heartbroken that's given up on everything. It's interesting here that in both scripts, he uses Hollow as the description, as sort of, instead of just saying undead. Yeah. Um, especially because he references, like, the idea, unless you're a heartbroken, at which point you really will be a Hollow. Um, yeah. But one of the things that Aldia is making here is that we're going to surpass. We if we if we want to like kind of surpass the, the if we want to surpass the curse that's upon us, which seems to be our which is our only motivation, and it's what we actually do want. It's the only thing we kind of have a choice is our own wa of what we want to do, not what we we we're able to do. Aldia's sort of been kind of like squatting around. It's like, oh hey, someone's come by. Let's let's see what he's going to be doing, and he decides to follow us around. Young Hollow, there are but two paths. Inherit the order of this world, or destroy it. But only a true monarch can make such a choice. 
Very few indeed have come even this far. And yet your journey is far from over. I've grown hollow. Have you what it takes? Truly? Hollow, the paths are two. Inherit the logic of the world, or break it. And leading it is only a true king. Many can't even reach this place. And even here is only halfway. Hollow, are you sufficient to it? So, this inherit the logic of the world. So, the word for inherit is notable because... The, the, okay, so the idea of the fire linking. The kanji used in fire linking does literally mean to link. Like, link. Yeah. A connection or tie. However, the verb for linking doesn't actually mean that. So it's sort of like uh, the it's sort of the localization got very literal with the yeah. the under the etymology in order to well it makes for a, it makes for a more natural and unique sounding localization. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but the idea is that it's it's inheriting the fire. It's sort of succeeding. You're ta you're sort of yeah. when you tie yourself to the fire, you are becoming a line of succession for it. Yeah, and it's uh, in Dark Souls three they. They sort of address that by having it say "air of fire destroyed." When you yes, it's like one of the the one of the inheritors. Yes. Now, another thing is the inherit the logic of the world. So we're not talking necessarily about the fire linking in this case, though. What we're talking about is something that Koth talks about in his dialogue that got sort of localized out. He references it once and calls it by a similar thing, like the or like the natural order or something yeah, to that effect. Yeah. In Dark Souls, Koth makes the point that the logic of the universe is that fire. Flares up, but then it slowly goes, but it eventually will go out, and then dark is left behind as a result. Right. Like, that's the basic logic. It's the fundamental concept to how everything in Dark Souls works post-fire. The, uh, the idea being that Gwyn tried to resist that logic, because Gwyn... Gwyn doesn't like it when things don't go when things aren't to his advantage. Yeah. Um. So the idea was okay. We've got to exist the logic of the world. And what Dark Souls Two is saying here is that Gwyn has, by this, by virtue of time, of how much time has passed and how what's become now common sense, is that there's a Lord of Cinder. Then that's eventually though the fire's like kind of like going to slowly start burning out and waning, and then we've got to get a new one, and then that new one's going to light it, and then we start the process all over again. And so it becomes this infinite sort of a cycle of us going through this. We link the fire. There's still a curse around. It's still causing problems. It's fading. We got to link the fire again to keep it alive because what? Why are we doing this? And this is where Aldia comes in. Young Hollow, seek after Venric. He who almost became a true monarch. The Venric is certain to guide your way. Fledgling Hollow, may we meet again? Hollow, you should meet Vanclad, the one who came close to kingship. He likely has the mark to show the path. Hollow, may we meet again. Now, the mark is in reference to the ring, which has the, the mark signature we use to open the door and get into everything. The closest to kingship, this is referring, of course, again, when it says true monarch is to become the, the Lord of Cinder, the King of Kindling. This is the, what part of the, part of the local, this is part of, sort of, From Software's attempt to help clarify further, like, the game by having Aldia come in and be more straightforward about, okay, you're gonna right. become a Lord of Cinder. So it's referenced again by the Emerald Herald, it's very straightforward, but it's like, okay, even in the localization, this is the first time we're basically getting the reference to, you're going to become, um, not just a king, but like a true king. The great king, you could say. And then, of course, now we're back to the Herald, because we've now gone to the castle with our souls. This castle is isolated, but nonetheless, you must forge on to bring an end to your journey and mine. This castle's already a shutaway place. However, the way you should proceed is beyond here for sure, and then an end to your travels and mine. So mostly, the, the, pretty much the same here. Okay, so the castle's gone through a lot of shit. It's sort of become sort of this abandoned, isolated thing. There's barely anyone actually living there. And she's got a mission now. She's not just sort of doing her duty as a firekeeper just because. Then we go through the castle, we go through all the bullshit there, and finally we get to meet with the wonderful Queen of Drang Lake. You have fought admirably on your journey, cursed undead. I am Nishandra, Queen of Drang Lake. Brave undead. 
Your arrival here foreshadows your fate. A true monarch is much more than a ruler of men. A true monarch carries the weight of their souls. The last king of this land, King Vendrick, as he was called, he was less of a king than you might imagine. He found the strength to rule his people, and when the undead were born, cursed, he found more strength to face them. But in the end, he never took the true throne. You've surmounted the trials and admirably arrived here, cursed undead. My name is Duna Chandra, the queen of this Drangleg. A king is one who takes over the karma of the soul. The former king of this country, yes, his name was called Vanclad. He had the capacity insufficient to be the true king. He gained power, became the king of man, and then, in order to confront the cursed humans that came to be born, sought further power and made various attempts. But he never arrived at the throne. Okay, so there's a few things to break down from here. One is, she calls these the trials, specifically. And this is the first reference to trials, but it comes up a few times. This is the idea is that everything we've done was again another system. It's been set up this way for a reason. Like we're supposed to have to go through this way in order to get strong, similar to how Gwendolyn and Framp set everything up in Dark Souls 1. Right. For us. The, another thing that's interesting about is the notion of a king is one who takes over the karma. So it's like he carries the weight of their souls in the English, but it doesn't really clarify what that's supposed to mean. It seems, right. seems like a kind of a meaningless phrase. The Japanese, though, is very straightforward because it gets brought up, again, this is a line that gets brought up a lot, is a king is one who takes over the karma of the soul. There's sort of these fading consequences for the soul, and the karma that gets talked about repeatedly is going to be that we're sort of caught in this system. This I think it's called oftentimes a fate. Um, yeah. that we're going to keep on, the souls are going to keep on being you, like we're going to keep on using our souls to fuel the fire. Um, and the idea is that, okay, the, the, the way to solve the curse, as has been purported, it's sort of the lie that's sort of been purported, is that we're going to solve the curse by um, linking the fire, you'll become the ultimate king, and then you'll have control over the karma of the soul. Now, it's a very, it's a lie, um, it's hinted to be a lie in Dark Souls 1, and it's now quite clearly a lie, because, you know, yeah. there's a Dark Souls 2. And then another interesting thing is that she has this line where it's like, the former king of this country, yes, the name was called Vanclad. What she's saying is, is like, it's not like, oh, King Vendrick, as he was called. She literally forgot her own husband's name. Like, <laughs> like as literally, like, she has to, like, remind herself, ah, oh, yes, his name was Vanclad. Right, right, right. So, like, she says you're less than a king uh, than you might imagine. He had the capacity insufficient to be a true king. So I'm going to bring up a few things that happened with Vanclad, because this is okay. referencing some stuff talked about. Here it is. Uh, so for the soul of Vanclad, his strong soul eventually attracted the dark. So they talk about how he was lacking a vessel for the true throne. And the Japanese is again referencing the king who once ruled the world of man was but a, ves was but a vessel insufficient to truly be king, wasn't he? So the idea being is that this vessel, this capacity to be a king is being brought up. Like there's, there, there's something innate in your your being that uh, gives you the ability to be a king. There's this idea that Van Clad just, he didn't have what it took. And this is again referenced in, say, the crown of Van Clad when we later see him, is the crown of the king of Drang Lake Van Clad. What really is a king? So the Jap the English says some say it's birthright while others call it destiny. Well, in the English in the Japanese it again keeps it consistent. It says some say it's natural as in by birth capacity. So it's it's like it's like you're just born to be a king. Like you're just kind of born with this like kingly quality. Um some say it's a determined fate. Well, some say like you know circumstances just be what they are. You're kind of just put into there. Like you you you're king now. Whoop. That's just how it turned out. But the idea, of course, being, well, if it's simply the name of the one who rules the world of man, that may be enough. So the idea being is, you know, he, 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 you know, he, he was ruling something, so maybe that's just what is king. You just have control right. over something. But, of course, the idea is that Dark Souls 2 wants to go into a deeper philosophical question about rule, leadership, and the ultimate question being is being the king of your own soul, king of your own will. Like, you who, what is your free will and you who make your own choices is the ultimate question they're trying to get at. And if anyone wants some, um, if anyone wants that expanded on Quesadive, who is a political science person, has 
written quite a fair bit about the portrayal of kings in Dark Souls 2, so we will link that in the description. All right, so we get to... After that, he says, he gained power, became the king of man, and then in order to confront the cursed humans that came to be born... So the idea is is that we... It's like undead have always been a problem for everyone who's ever ruled anywhere. And so, like, Van Cl It's like Van Vendrick... And we learned that Vendrick had this fear of it. He had all these. He had like he he did all everything he could to kind of keep the hollow and undead population down. He and there seems to he's be, seemed to have been very superstitious. So he like blamed mages and like everything. Like all of this this stuff because no one really knows where the curse is, where it comes from, what it really is. And the idea is that he saw further power and made various attempts to try to fix it. But in but it, but he never arrived at the throne. Now the idea the game makes such an emphasis on you trying to find your own choice. But then until scholar, you have no choice. You don't even really get to the point where you can make the choice. You get to the point right before you would make the choice. It's like, are you going to link the fire? You're going to choose the dark. Find out next time. Well, I, I remember um, when that came out, people thought that ending was you making the choice. That was you choosing fire. So. And there was this whole discussion about how, like, oh, it's like a meta thing about how there is no choice. But the way you're saying no, it now, yeah, it's that now you are a monarch, you can make the choice, but the choice you make, we're not yeah. going to actually the show. The idea is, like, the throne was pro- like, the throne, we, we don't see what happens after we close the throne. So we don't, for all we know, the throne is, like, just your chair in an elevator, and it's going to take you down to the first flame or whatever. Or that's that's the entire and we'll talk about this later. That's the point of the plot that gets elaborated on later is that that's sort of what we do, but we never get to that point. We get the cutaway before we're allowed to make the choice between light and dark. And that's why um scholar decided it need to add a, a it tried to shoehorn in another ending on top of that and it well we'll talk about that later. Now it's never clarified in Dark Souls 2 if we're like the second fire linker or if we're like one after many because like, because of dialogue that gets brought up yeah. later and things like that. So it's still vague on, on what how exactly, but there's clearly been... There was someone sometime before, at like, toward the beginning of all this, that built the throne and built these sort of facilities mm. to help get there and facilitate the fire linking. Right. Um, And it seems like Vendrick kind of, like, found it after, like, either before or after building the castle, probably before, considering it's a little convenient where he chose to build the castle, but um, the idea being is that there he they found these ruins and they've been and Vendrick and Aldia have been learning about what's going on. By this point in the story, you should have a clear idea that there there's there's been there's been a bit of investigation now into understanding what the actual history in the world that everyone's forgotten and doesn't know about in this game. Mm. Well, that that's what gave me the impression that it had been like a while that there'd been multiple fire linkings in between one and two. Just because of the way that Aldia seemed obsessed with sort of studying it and figuring it out. Because mm -hmm. he's like, okay, this the same thing keeps happening. So, like, there's a pattern to it. So what do we do to get out of it? And then, and then, uh, then speaking of Aldia, let's move on to his dialogue. I believe we've been acquainted. Young Hollow, conqueror of fear. What drives you so to overcome the supposed curse? So he like he he so we kind of he explodes on us. He laughs at it, and he's like, "Ah, you're a familiar face," because Aldi is an asshole. Yep. Um, and the idea is that okay, conquer a fear, w hollow one who challenges hardship. So again, that word hardship comes up. Uh, what have you desired to try over um to try overcoming the curse thus far? So. Okay, so we've been going through all these troubles and difficulties. We're going through and we're, we're, we're standing up to the challenge. Um, but, but now Aldi is saying, okay, you're going through all these troubles, but why are you doing this? What is it that's motivated you thus far? So he's trying to get to the deeper question, then we get to... Life is brilliant. Beautiful. It enchants us. To the point of obsession. Some are true to their purpose, though they are but shadows, flesh and mind. One man lost his own body, but lingered on as a head. Others chase the charms of love, however it is self. What is it that drives you? Life is dazzling and beautiful, and so everyone is captured by it. The one who didn't forget his mission, even though he became h hollowed out. 
The one that lost his body and ended up becoming a mere head. The one who seeks the love she couldn't obtain. And you yourself? So a few clarifications. One, I said he, I said his, 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 he, his, she. Those aren't in the Japanese text. I, wa I did that in order to clarify that those are sort of... This is the common interpretation by the Japanese community. The first right. one... So the some are true to their purpose, though they are but shells, flesh, and mind. This could apply to anyone, but in the yes. Japanese version, the one who didn't forget his mission, even though he became hollowed out, and the fact there's a trend of them talking about specific people, people right. think this refers to the pursuer boss, who is a named character in the Japanese version. Right. Uh, I think it's like Agdaliz or something like that in the Japanese version, and it's like Ag yeah Agdaliz or something like that. I can't re I I don't bother remembering the Japanese version of the names. I'll be honest. I I I do really love the localization. Yeah. versions they're so simple but like basically the idea was that he's sort of this 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 sort of create this mad warrior who becomes a, a a curse bound a spell bound whatever you want to call it the idea is like he's been bound by a curse or a spell in order to become this sort of undead hunter who right. hunts the cursed he's kept to his mission even long after alkin's fallen uh, one man lost his own body but lingered on his head. That's an obvious reference to Van Garl. Yep. Um, who's called Vanguard in the Japanese version because, you know, Vanguard, Vanguard, that type of thing. Right. Uh, um, others chase the charms of love, however elusive. Now, most in the Japanese community assume this to refer to the witch. Zuli. Um, yeah, Zuli. Yeah. Um, because she's the one who... Who She's the only character, who who specific character, who seems to have this kind of love you couldn't obtain. The only other characters who could work is perhaps the the prince and princess of Alkin and yep. Ven. Um, but they're kind of their own thing, so... But what Aldi is trying to say is that, okay, so there's this awesome there's this awesome quality to life, and everyone is captured by it in some degree, and we see all these people who have done it in different ways, some who are bound to live kind of like life forever um, on a mission, some who sign up end up becoming, losing their heads in from it, some of those who kind of have love, and it's like, okay, so... And you yourself, what? Oh, so and it's like, what was it that drives you? It's like, okay, what about you? What is mm. what is this this quality that's keeping your life beautiful and captured you in your life? Once the Lord of Life banished Dark and all that stemmed from humanity, and men assumed a fleeting form. These are the roots of our world. Men are props in the stage of life, and no matter how tender, how exquisite, a lie will remain a lie. Young Harlow, knowing this, do you still desire peace? So, okay, so the one who once became the King of Light shut away the dark of the name called Man. And then man acquired a transient form. That for sure is the beginning of this world's logic. So just for that part. So the idea, when they talk about the logic of the world, they're no longer talking about the old logic that Framp talked about. Because that still exists. It's, it, Dark Souls 3 continues along with that trend too. But the idea is that Gwyn has now tried to resist how the universe just works. And in order to do that, he created the fire linking system and all that. I'm going to keep, I'm not going to let fire fade. Fire is going to yeah. be this eternal thing. It's never going to go away. Well, that became a problem because fire eventually did begin to fade. And so what happens was this transient form, the human form as we think of it, is not the true form of humans. It's it's purposefully mirrors the god's form and purposefully, intentionally rather, was designed to make us beautiful, to make us... um pretty, so to say, to kind of make everything bright and colorful, metaphorically speaking. Um, but what Aldi is getting at is, okay, that was the logic of the world Gwyn tried to impose. And as he puts it here, and all of men is within a life of falsehood. So it's not like he calls us props on the stage of life, but it's like, our whole lives are basically a lie, is his point. No matter how kind or how beautiful, a lie is no more than a lie, after all. Hollow, do you still desire peace even so? So that's sort of, he has a question, it's kind of a yes or no, it doesn't really matter, yeah. it's just as, again, because Dark Souls 2 has no meaningful choice, even though it keeps on asking you about having meaningful choice. The, the idea being is that, okay, Gwyn created this lie, but it didn't really work, 
because then undead became a thing. Yeah. Because ultimately, the fire did fade, and the dark was going to resurge. Yeah. Um, and suddenly the lie was going to be coming out. But of course, Gwyn stopped the lie from coming out. He created the fire linking system. He started doing so. He branded the undead as unholy monsters. This is all the fall of the dark. It's this awful thing. And da 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 da. Not trying to admit that. Yeah, this is kind of a byproduct. Because Dark Souls 1 starts implying that the gods are the cause of the curse. Dark Souls 2, again, is building on this implication. And 3 then outright says it and pretends that's a big reveal. Venric. The near true monarch is here, and not far off. But what is a king? You, neither born with greatness nor granted it by the fates. What is it you seek? You cannot even say yourself. <laughs> we shall meet again, young hollow. The one who approached kingship once, Van Clad, is in this land. What is a king? It's not a capacity you're born with, nor is it a fate you're determined to have. You desire what? What is it you desire? It's still not known even to you yourself. Until next time, Hollow. Okay, so Van Clad was almost going to become Lord of Cinder. Um, he was going to link the fire and do so. Right. But he ended up not doing it. So, so after all, it's like okay. So after all this of what the gods have done, so Van Clyde was going to become part of the system, but then he didn't. Van Clyde may not have had a certain capacity, but that's the wrong question to ask because that's not really what defines a king. And that's kind of what Aldi is trying to get at. There's something deeper to this question of kingship than just sort of you're born with it or your your sort of circumstances put you in that position. So, like in. In this Japanese script, like, the idea is Vendrick slash Van Clyde is just kind of a washout. Basically. Yeah, that's really interesting, because the implication that, like, I had gotten and a lot of my friends had gotten as well is that it wasn't that he had failed, it was that he got to the point of linking the fire and then decided to, like, resist it and say no. And that's why he didn't link it. But now it just seems like he just wasn't good enough. Yeah, that the idea was he didn't because he figured out that Nishandra was using him. And so he started right. trying to do stuff to keep her from doing it. And that's the idea is that he ends up become he ends up hollowing out, but he's still protecting that. Because the biggest the problem that Van Cla that Vendrick has is that um he's done everything he could to try to figure out what the problem is, and obviously him and Aldia had differences on how to go about that. V Vendrick ends up dabbling into some some darker things. He starts becoming a bit of a hypocrite over time because he's so so desperate to try to and even him, he he ends up becoming an undead himself, and it's never clarified yeah. when exactly that happened. But by the end of it, he sort of becomes this, as he himself admits, sort of this sorry sack of a man. He gets so close, and yet despite getting close, he comes to realize that it's really there's no point. Because what him and Aldi have realized is that you can't really control the curse. Um, and so far as things go back to you're just a living human and there's nothing. Like you're a living human and then you die and you just die. A new reality right. has come upon them is that humans weren't meant to die after a finite lifespan. They were intended to, much like wolves and gods and all the other races have, like, really long, like, cent at least centuries or millennia long lives, perhaps eternity. And the problem, and, and this reality is something that they've been going against because they've been brainwashed to thinking that well, this was our true life. And the undeath right. is sort of this terrible curse. But the reality is that, yes, it's a curse if you want to talk about it sort of in a philosophical or metaphorical thought. And they talk about that as sort of like, you know, being alive is a is the curse. Like, um, because we're still alive right. after death and all that. And, like, l life and soul, like, so the soul and curses are closely related. So it's like living itself is kind of a curse in its own, in, in a technical sense. Um... And but when it comes to okay, so we finally we've we've gathered up the souls, we've gone through this undead curse and everything. Doing so, you figure out that no, we're we we it's a lie, it, and that's what Aldia discovered. It's all a lie. We were we were we were in a transient form from the start. This was the logic that Gwyn had created for this universe, but it wasn't the real rules of how the universe works. And those real unit rules have now l creeped their head over the horizon. Right. So, and that sort of become that sort of become the issue is that Van Cl Vendrick was just desperate trying to keep Nashandra from possibly subvert perverting and subverting things and making things potentially worse. But he didn't really accomplish anything, and that's why he sort of has us go on our own mission when we get to meet him. Um, and we're getting close to that point now. So, what is it that we desire? So he sort of leaves us with this question of, okay, okay, 
So you're trying to we're trying to figure out what the kingship is, but you gotta th think on like what is it that you really want? Like what is it you really want in a grander scheme yeah. of things for yourself and for the universe? Okay, we get the ring from and let's say we didn't kill the boss yet, so we just got the ring and then we left. So, Emerald Herald. This ring is the symbol of the king. Use it to gain passage through the king's gate. And venture to the far east. And seek the home of the dragon. To the far east. Bearer of the curse. If you are to be the next monarch. Then one day you will walk those grounds. Without really knowing why. That ring is the sign of the king. If you have that proof, you'll be able to open the king's gate and struggle on to that place on the eastern end, presumably of the continent in this context. You are the one clad, you are the one clad in the curse. If you are one who links, if you are a linker, then you'll be there at any rate, whether you desire to or not. So again, when she's saying this, it's not a matter of you're being unconscious. You're all doing this consciously. Her point is, is like... You've been doing this regardless of your will this whole time. And Aldi has now pointed out by this point that, yeah, you've not, you're not doing this because you want to. You're doing this because you have to. Yeah. What do you want, really, though? What is it that you really want out of all this? What do you think is best? And that just as Aldi is playing on this, the Herald is pointing out now, you're, whether you want to or not, you're going to have to end up there. Because, again, it's the next step on your journey. And that's the point being made. And then Nishandra has this line about Drang Lake's no longer. Here now, Drang Lake has been destroyed is her point. So, like, as soon as you find... As soon as we confirm, it's like, Hey, Queenie, we found your husband. He's a hollow. She's like, okay, Drang Lake's officially <laughs> over now. I'm happy with this. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this. Brave undead. Seek the throne. Follow the symbol of the monarch. And do what must be done. Undead, seek the throne. In accordance with the proof of the king, do what must be done. Nothing really special here. Um, the idea is, again, the reference to the throne. And this is the only thing that's never clarified, is that, what is this throne? Now, we learn, of course, as we've said, it's a stepping stone for the first flame. It's sort of kind of like the, let's call it the gateway to the flame. And it's being framed around this idea of kingship. Again, because the idea is, we're going to take the throne and we're going to end up fighting and becoming the new Lord of Cinder. That's yep. the point, is that we're getting at. So then after that, we get to the next Emerald Carol, and if I remember, this is um, this is when you first get to the shrine now, the dragon shrine. Bearer of the curse, long have I awaited one such as you, one who might shatter the shackles of fate, one who can set me free. Bearer of the curse, it was my own manifestation that led you here. The ancient dragon has watched over the world for eons past. Take this. Do not resist. The dragon welcomes you. Person clad in the curse, I've continued to wait for an undead who possess the power to surmount the karma from here. For the person who will release me. Person clad in the curse, person that was led to this land by my other self. The dragon that is older than antiquity continues to spectate the world. Take this. Do not resist. The dragon will receive you. Okay. So, first off, again, we have this reference to the karma. The karma. They call it the shackles of fate in this case. Yep. But, again, we've, I've talked before about the idea that the logic of the world was sort of... When they talk about the logic of the world, they're not talking about what it was talked about by Koth. It's Gwyn's logic for the... Like, this is... this is Basically, it's Gwyn's fanfic of how the world should work, yeah. in his mind. Uh, this The consequence of all of this... These actions... Well, of Gwyn's actions upon the original order of the universe... Is that now we have this fire-linking system. And the th Emerald Herald is sort of... She's the only one who can help us who can help and bring us to the point where we can link the fire. So she's sort of trapped in this duty. So it's like, okay, you, you go do the thing, I bring you here, and I'll be free. 
And then, of course, now, she, now, of course, what's interesting is that the Emerald Herald has a higher pitched voice in this one instance. This is the only instance she has a higher pitched voice. In the English, she calls, she says, her manifestation led us here, and that people have argued about the meaning of that, and people are like, oh no, she just got record, she recorded later, and they just didn't direct her to have the same voice as before. No, when she says my other self, yeah. she means a bunshin, she means like a clone, a, a counterpart. She means. These are the, this is the same term used to describe, say, the other selves or the clones of Pinwheel yeah. during his boss battle, when he has, like, the little, like, illusions that jumping around. And that's kind of the point we have to get through, is that we've... The, the Herald we meet and we can potentially kill is not the real Herald. There's this separate en entity, and it's like two of you exist simultaneously. Yeah, yeah so the Herald in Dragon Shrine is... The real herald and then she's sending out these manifestations of herself yes and yeah. there's a point being made with like the feather she'll give like her 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 boonshin will give you a feather um i think if i i think it's the boonshin like i think that's where you receive you it, it you like, get it at dragon area yeah oh you do get it at the area okay yeah. so you get it from her then directly yeah okay so that is actually important because it's it's an in the, the description for the feather says it's an old bird feather. The child of dragons that only knew the shutaway life continued to entrust her longing for freedom to a feather that strayed from somewhere. Similar to the homeward bone, which has the feelings of the undead who desire to ha have a place to belong. The same thing happens with the herald, where her desire, her longing to be free creates this feather that we can use to rest but it may also indicate that she was able to derive from that the ability to create projections which could give her at least some approximation of freedom so she's she's been there it's not this isn't like a mistake in like say the localizations recording or whatever like there's actually two heralds and this one is apparently younger from what we can t from based on the voice so then Let's get to Aldia again. Young Hollow. How you grapple with a falter with this dreadfully twisted world. Peace grants men the illusion of life. Shackled by falsehoods, they yearn for love, unaware of his grand illusion. Until the curse touches the flesh. We are bound by this yoke. As true as the dark that turns within men. All men trust fully the illusion of life. But is this so wrong? A construction of facade, and yet a world full of warmth and resplendence. Now, hello, are you intent on shattering the yoke, spoiling this wonderful falsehood? Before Aldia sort of asked this question of, okay, well, what is it, like, what is it that you want? Like, what is it that you want to get out of this and do so? It's like, do you, what do you desire despite the fact that it, everything's sort of a lie? Now he's elaborating on that at this point where, hollow, one who keeps on going in this twisted world, man lives in peace. So this is a point where it's not that peace grants man the illusion of life, it's that Men lives in peace, basically. Like, when you take away the undead part, it's generally peaceful. The gods, then the system that the gods set up, has allowed men to live a, a fair a life that's kind of enjoyable and normal and things like that. Okay, so man lives in peace. And so, they believe and love the cage of falsehoods, even if it's likely all lies. So it's not that they yearn, they, are they yearn for love. What they're saying is that they believe in love, the lie, basically, that they're trapped in. Gwyn set everything up, so they would basically become his slaves, essentially, and they wouldn't even realize it. It was this slow, methodical, and rather ingenious plot to essentially keep humans down, keep the humans down, basically. Right. And it worked wonderfully. <laughs> and it was like, okay, you know, life may be hard, but, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, it's not outright slavery like the giants. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so even if it's all like, they love it. But then comes the undead curse. And it's like, okay, that's, that's kind of a problem. It's like, ooh, you know, we were having this nice, normal life, and now we got to deal with this undead thing, which is like, okay. It's like you kill someone, and then you kill five people, one of them wake up, and then they kill five people, one of them wake up, and then, like, all it takes is enough of you becoming hollows in order to cause, like, like, say, with Baldur in Dark Souls 1, the whole kingdom collapses yeah. because just too many... It just got out of control suddenly. And that's kind of what makes Undead so dangerous. 
Especially when you have these people who, they thought they died, and they had these lives, but now they're alive again, but now they're dealing with undeath, and it's like, but on top of the fact that they have these problems where their lives may have, they, they're dead, so, and most of them are young, so it's like, okay, what killed you? You probably have some problems and gripes already. Yeah. Um... And now you got to deal with on top of that that now that you're in this state it isn't just like you died and you got to stay dead like you just got to enjoy the sweet embrace of death and go with Nito. You now got to deal with the whole fact that you're still around, you're still conscious, and you could end up um, becoming a monster. It's an obviously very horrifying and stressful situation. It's understandable mm -hmm. why this becomes a problem. Yeah. This is the point that is being brought up by Aldi is this is the yoke imposed on us. So the dark sign was the the, sh the yoke, the shackles that were placed upon us by the gods as a means to control us. Now the gods covered it up fast enough, but Aldi has now figured it out. The dark resurging from within man as the dark sign is the proof that Humans were originally creatures of dark, that the logic to the universe, this wonderful trans form, was all a lie. That the human form is just a transient lie. So basically, our life has all been a lie. But is it truly wrong? I mean, it may be a lie, and Aldia sort of takes the scientific, you know, sort of clinical approach to this. It's like, yeah, you know, kind of outrageous that we've basically been lied to our entire existence and have been used and abused by the gods, but... Mm. Is that really... Uh, is that really a problem? Like, we got some perks! <laughs> okay, so now let's move on to... I am Olya. I sought to shed the yoke of fate, but failed. Now, I only await an answer. Seek the throne. Seek light, dark, and what lies beyond. So I am Andil, the one who cha who once challenged the karma, didn't accomplish it, and nevertheless awaits an answer. Seek the throne, the light and the dark, the ends of them. So here, sort of, the localization kind of has Aldia kind of give away his game a little too early when it says what lies beyond. The idea is that, okay, you go to the throne, you got your light and your dark option. You gotta think about what they're gonna result in now. Um, but the thing that's even more important is that he's saying, oh, I who once challenged the karma did accomplishment. So Aldia was going through experiments and they were trying to understand things. And Aldia himself is called the, the scholar of the first sin. Or in the Japanese, he's basically he's the researcher of the original sin. The idea that we're putting together is that Vendrick and Aldia had the desire to understand what was going on with souls and the curse and everything, but they ended up clashing because their means ended up differing a lot. Like, Vendrick sort of wanted to have kind of like this uppity-up type of thing. Um, Aldia was more into, uh, you know, let's just, you know, experiment without concern for anything. <laughs> and again, like I said, Vendrick ends up becoming a hypocrite because he starts using some of Aldia's stuff after Aldia disappears in order to deal with the giants and things like that. Like, this becomes sort of one of the problems with Vendrick is that he sort of tries to stand for things, but he kind of proves incompetent. And there's another, of course, another line that I think I've, I'm not sure if I pointed out in a previous podcast, but the idea is that there's this, this spell that's associated with Aldia. Yeah. And people have yeah. commonly considered it to be related to um, a family. Like, it caught, ties into his, like, history with Vendrick and their backstory or whatever. And it sort of says, A secret art unleashes a gust of souls. The homing soul mass pierces its target, then hits repeatedly for additional damage. This blasphemous spell is a family heirloom of Lord Aldia's. It was designed to pummel foes until its power is entirely exhausted. Well, yes, it is a secret art, like it says. But what it's saying is not that... Um, Aldia inherited it, like it's something like his family passed down to him or something like that. It's when he disappeared, this is what he left behind. And the reason why it's important is because it shows that Aldia was in looking into heretical things, and this is kind of a theme with his mansion, is that they were all kind of going into taboo topics and things, and as part of that, what Aldia had discovered was something that had the goal to keep pursuing the enemy until they ran out of breath. This idea of pursuing is brought up, it's hinted at in 1, and it's brought up more explicitly in 2 and 3, that this notion of souls acting on their own to pursue a target is, in principle, how the dark functions. Because the dark, the dark is the only element that has this unique quality of being able to randomly gain a will of it, of its own, like, just by itself it will develop a will and start acting and creating life. And we see that several times, there's several, there's many examples of this throughout the series. 
Um, and so the idea that Aldia was looking into this idea that create something with a will that can pursue the enemy. This is kind of fringing on really, really dangerous territory. Um, and of course, this is all in reference to Manus, who was the sorcerer who created the Pursuer spell, which I think it's called something else. Like, it's called Affinity in this? Yeah, Affinity, yeah. Okay. But the, the point is that Aldia was looking into what's called the original sin, and this becomes relevant because he creates various abominations and stuff. And part of this was looking into dragons because, well, if you're trying to understand the universe, you have to understand, of course, the origins. So you understand the dragons. So Aldi is basically, Aldi is perhaps one of the few characters who understands the universe as well as the gods who originally dominated and kind of collected all that knowledge and information in the first place. I guess the question is like, does the Japanese script ever say what the original sin is? No, it doesn't clarify exactly. Right. It says he's the, the original sin researcher, basically. The researcher of the original yeah. sin. So was it that he committed the original sin, or was it that he was studying the original sin, say, committed by Gwyn, or that exists? Right. There's sort of a question there. And because his research is all over the place, it's hard to pin down what exactly the original sin is in context. Like, one point that's being made is that with the, the, what do they call them, the Forlorn. Well, the Forlorn also exists in Dark Souls 3, so let's go with the Japanese tr translation I have, which would be the, uh, the Forfeit. So, so, like, there's this idea that Aldia, in his, he, in his research, some that were experimented on manifested as spirits like they were being summoned, right? Right. So they've lost, their, their bodies have turned into spirits, and they can't really go back. So they now exist in this odd limbo where they exist outside reality, so they can appear in pretty much at any time, any any period. It's not clear if they can like go to any place yet. Right. Just the idea that they can kind of manifest. So this kind of gives them this their own form of immortality as a way, but the issue becomes is that they it's what's called a connection without self. So they're, they've lost their sense of self, and they can't truly bind themselves into reality with their own bodies either. So they're kind of in this, like I said, a limbo space. But it doesn't clarify how related that is to Maldia's um, work in the original Sin. Was this sort of the critical component? Was Aldia looking at the connections to you, the universe, for example, or the connections to reality? So I think we could just say, broadly speaking, that the original sin has to do with just Aldia's research into everything that's gone on in the U. Like, the entire, the entire, I guess, framework for the Dark Souls setting, I guess we should say. Right. And if we were to say that, if there's anything that's a sin, I think most people ag agree on it being like something like what Gwyn did. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense, yeah. if only because... Gwyn is sort of the... He's the cause of yeah. all these problems, basically. And we get to now the ancient dragon. And the dragon tells you... The murk shifts and stirs. Yet another stands before us. Then so be it. For the curse of life is the curse of want. And so you peer into the fog in hope of answers. Now this character's... For f the few lines he says have always confused fans, I've noticed, at least in everything I've seen, right. read and seen. And it becomes an issue, especially because even the translators that I, of the previous translator I've seen work on this line, say that they didn't understand what it was talking about. Well, I have, I have a little bit more clarity to give on this. Okay. Understand. The stagnation begins to move. So one point we have to bring up is that the ancient dragons are a race that existed during a time when the universe was stagnant. Yeah. And I've talked before how time isn't convoluted, or in Dark Souls 3, it's not everything, it's stagnant. Yeah. And this is the point being made, is that before fire, there was just existence and non-existence. So it was the same, it was monotony, it was, it was all grey rock. Rock trees, rock dragons, rock land. Yeah. It's stagnant, it was the same, nothing changed. And that was fine. The dragons were fine with that. They were beings that ex that just existed, and that was okay. Then fire happened, and it gave the dragon souls, and it added all these these new elements to the universe, and now existence had qualities and differences, which we call disparity. And this becomes important, is that what the ancient dragon is saying is that it, it was enjoying its stagnation where it just sat around here waiting. But then us as a living being, kind of just walking in on him, has broken the stagnation. So this is the mindset we're dealing with with a dragon, is the idea that they're beings that sort of exist on this principle that, you know, they're okay with things not changing or doing so. Now there are exceptions, um, Seath is a very yep. good exception yeah. because, you know, 
he sort of lacks that immortality and rock quality the others have, so he has both both in nature and in motivation the reason to be like other living things and not like a dragon and just sort of sit around and actually be, what's the word, um, pioneering. So that's an important line there. And then, okay, so yet another stands before us. Changes again. Hmm? So again, the idea is that we're a change. We, we By intruding into his periphery, we have become a, a, a ripple in the stagnant pool that right. he was existing in. It cannot be escaped, so then so be it. It cannot be, so it's like, okay, there's no helping it. Um, if seeking is the rule of life. So it's not for the curse of life is the curse of want, which is a, such a weird fucking abstract line they just went with. The point, the idea is that, you know, when life has a will, it acts on parameters independent of external stimuli. Right. What makes that relevant is that that will means there is always something that is to be desired to reach that endpoint. So with the pursuers, the idea is you gave d the you 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 ignited a will, you gave human you put inputted you you triggered a will in humanity. And is that that will is of course question is it envy or love? Well, it doesn't really matter because whether it's envy or love, either way, that will that parameter says person whether I'm envious of them or I love them, I'm going to pursue them relentlessly until they're destroyed, even if it destroys myself. And so the dragon is saying, okay, well, you always are seeking or you're always pursuing. There's always some goal with life because it has a will and there's some end point to it. There's something it's supposed to be reacting to. So it's like, okay, I can't really help that you want to move, so we're going to go that. Okay, and so you peer into the fog in hope of answers. So the point is you're seeking as the rule of life. But for this reason, you seek an answer within the fog, hmm? And then he gives you the Ash and Mist core. So the idea is that, okay, so you seek something. Okay, so you want, um, you want, in order to get to the thing you seek, you want an answer from the fog that I'm going to provide. Okay, fine. So he provides you the core. And the core is unique in that it's essentially another example of time travel in Dark Souls, but uses a unique power or method in order to do it. So our memories are reconstructions of what, of events that actually happen. It's sort of like a painting. You kind of recreate this sort of idea of what had happened. It's not perfect, but it's there. There's a clear boundary between reality and the reconstruction, fiction. What the Ashen Mist Heart does is we go to these th beings, we go into their memories, and we use the heart, so the power of fog, er, sorry, erases the barrier between reality and fiction. And once the imagine, once the memory becomes reality, at that point, we are now suddenly in that time period of the reality, and that's how it functions. Now, it only works temporarily, but it's essentially we're using memories as a medium to transport ourselves to other times. Again, it's again, it's a kind of a heady concept, but that's sort of the idea of we're going with with the fog. So it, uh, there is sort of logic behind why we're getting this random mass of fog power that this dragon just handed us. It was like, okay, go away, stop bothering me. <laughs> and then, of course, the dragon gives us that, and we go into the memories, and we start getting all the pieces. So we get the red, the resonance of the the the, the, well, yeah. the giants. Well, you're calling it the resonance of the giants, but uh, it called it the giant's kinship, which. Confused yes, that's a, lot that's of a terrible choice. Yeah, it seems like it's just like either a power that was part of the giant soul, or alternatively, um, some quality or aspect of their body or something yeah. that we took. The idea is basically, and this is where Dark Souls Two get the plot gets a little stupid. Just you know, just a little bit. Yeah, is that basically we need this in order so we can get a bunch of giant golems to create a bridge so we can cross this small gap, yeah. like stopping Nishandra's evil plan. A fuck. She's this giant monstrous abomination, yeah. but fuck if she's gonna hop over a fucking well, hole. Well, the whole game happens because you can't hop over a waist high wall of rubble, so there's precedent. There's also a point that if we go back is that when we enter the castle, there's talk about the four greats, like the the prime minister, the the chancellor, whatever you want to call yeah, him, Veliger. Veliger. He he basically talks about how like Vendrick created the kingdom. With the soul, like he, they challenge, like he took the four great one souls and created the kingdom, which doesn't make sense in context that at least two of the four, like, predated Drang Lake and are still around yeah. even well after it. So there's a lot of, there's clearly that the script didn't go through a round of polish it needed. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to now Nishandra, because yeah. it's a little bit on the dragon, so. Brave undead. What did that dragon tell you? That 
thing is a prop, a false deity. Don't be fooled, my undead. Undead, why, what did you hear from that dragon? It's a thing of lies, a false god, don't be deceived. So, this is actually perhaps interesting, because it's not immediately obvious what Nish why Nishandra is so bothered by what the dragon is telling us, because it's not actively, it, it kind of is like, you come here and it's like, go away. You can join a covenant for it, yeah. but it doesn't really have anything to do. So she seems to just be bothered by like, okay, if that dragon's trying to like, interfere with my plans, don't believe it, it's not even a real dragon. <laughs> It's it's a creation of Aldia, which right. is interesting because the way it acts and it behaves, it acts just like the ancient dragon. Yeah, that that was a very confusing aspect. Yeah, it's obvious that they didn't flesh this out much because the original description for that dragon soul is found in a completely different dragon that has no related to it, but is an yeah. actual ancient dragon. Like, and that's another thing. We go to the skeleton, and the me what's interesting is that memories seem to be sort of imprinted in the being of the dragon. We're able to use the heart on beings less so than, say, functioning conscious minds, so to yeah. speak. This is also why in we're able to, like, go to, like, the crown of the, the old Iron King, and we go, like, or, like, whatever, and we go back in time with that and all that stuff. Yeah. Soul of the great ancient dragon that towers deep in the ritual place, the great one that possessed enormous power simply continues being there. The special soul of the dragon which was created in search of the abyss of the soul. So the interesting thing is that it's even acknowledged that the dragon was created. So it seems like yeah. it was always intended to be false. It just they didn't seem to figure out how they were going to explain that without giving us a completely different dragon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the abyss of the soul, and th this is again a big point because the the idea is that they call it again the essence of the soul. Here, it seems to be the same idea as those that you're gonna kind of like go into like the deepest recesses of the closest of okay, what is what is like the core of all th what is like the core of all things when it yeah. comes to the soul? Like what is and again the idea was if you understand the souls, you're understanding the first flame, and you're understanding the history of the first flame with the dragons and rock and all that. Mm. So this is what Aldia was go getting at, and he ends up becoming connected to the 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 bonfires as sort of the the tree ish monster thing. Like, does that ever does that ever get explained? Not in the Japanese no, script either. No, yeah. we're just supposed to infer from again the original sentence of it. He, seems he, like he was. He looks a lot like Bed of Chaos. Yes, it's and the thing was that with Isla's throne room that we enter in, which is the Bed of Chaos boss room, was built after the Chaos Flame and all that. And we can see from when we're outside the boss arena, there's the tree in the background. And then when we're in the boss arena, we see all the branches going through the ceiling to that. So it seems like it's built under or near a tree. So it seems like the tree might have always been there. And, like, by virtue of what Islith was being near it, she and her two daughters who were next to her became sort of... They became, like, the, the, the parasite, obviously. But, like, the parasite became attached to the tree, and that created a body out of that. With Aldia, though, it seems to be more fundamental in that Aldia has become sort of this tree abomination, but it's also on fire. And we've said before that everything was rock and that the arch trees were also rock and they were originally it. So the idea may be, and similar to Dark Souls 3 playing on this idea that as the world stagnates again, it sort of starts becoming more tree-ish. There may be this, I this, the this idea going around that because Aldia has sort of connected himself to the bonfires himself, he sort of found... And again, the bonfires are connected to the first flame. And the first flame, of course, is connected to the entire universe as a whole. It may be that in his work on the forfeit, the forlorn, they they were their lives and and selves were forfeit. Aldia though has managed to maintain his consciousness while connecting himself to the bonfires. He's sort of connected himself to the first flame and become sort of this abomination resulting from trying to what's the word? Um directly contact the mechanic like directly access the framework of the universe would be the best way to put it like um you try to have experimented with forces beyond your control and apprehension and they kind of backfire and you it's like oh, i'm a monster now it's sort of like that but he at least has enough control in that he can you know move around and use the bonfires sort of in that respect it's not until Dark Souls 3 that that becomes super relevant and i th i've said before off camera that my suspicion is that Miyazaki was behind, when Scholar was coming out, it was around the early time that 3 was probably being planned in development and going through the concepts. I And because the premise of 3 is basically Aldia secretly goes behind all the fire-linking people's back to tell 
the prospective fire linker, hey, don't link the fire, let's yeah. go do this whole um, let the fire die thing and then not do an Age of Dark, see what happens. It seems like the character of Aldia, who creates this, who sets all this up, was created in Scholar, but I, I, I get the feeling Miyazaki was the brainchild behind Aldia right. and his motivation and his actions in the Scholar version. He may not have been directly involved, but like... Um, that was sort of like it was sort of it, it it came from him and it was his his suggestion in order so it, he could lead things into right. three the way he did and then okay so we get to we get to go through we've, we've talked a lot about that in relation to the the dragon now and Aldi's research and his work but now we get to finally talk with Vendrick himself as flame rises so does it fade such is the way of things do you intend to link the fire. Then you must first take the throne. Prove your worth. Find the ancient crowns. Seek adversity, and they will be yours. And your wishes. Granted. Okay, so one who seeks fire. One who wants to be king. I am Vanclad, the one who rules Drangleg. It's established fire blooms and proceeds to go out at any rate. Will you be the one who links the fire? All is the will of the one on the throne. Seek an appropriate crown. Seek hardship. Seek ancient crowns. All is as they will. So again, we have this reference to hardship. Again, it's like, okay, go keep going through your difficulties and problems. Um, but the idea is that, okay, so fire, bl fire like, blossoms, and then yeah. it, it withers. Um, are you going to be the one who links it? All is the will of the one on the throne. So the idea, once again, the idea is that the throne, by being, the throne isn't the first flame, but by being on the throne, it will give you access so you can reach the first flame and make the choice yourself. And again, because of this whole metaphorical crown kingship idea, uh, cr um, throne kingship idea, it's he's like, okay, seek an appropriate crown. So it's not like prove your worth, find the ancient crowns. It's like, okay, seek an appropriate crown for you to wear on your throne when you decide if you're going to link the fire or not. Uh, seek hardship, seek ancient crowns, and your wish will be granted. It all is as they will. So it's like, okay, once you become the crown, you're the king. Okay, it's all going to be as you want. Seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. I am Vendrick, ruler of Drang Lake. Seeker of fire, deliverer of crowns. What do you see in the flames? Find the crowns and your own answers. The crowns hold the strength of lords from times long past. Seek adversity. As befits you, seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. I am no king. I am more fit to be a jester. I was unaware of my own blindness. We are feeble vessels with feebler souls. We would cast aside the prop of life only to face greater hardship. Are you another such fool or something more? I fail to see your design, young moth. But... I see very little these days. So this is after you've gotten your first crown, I believe. So the first part. You, one who seeks fire, one who acquires a crown suitable to a king. Okay, so it's like, you seek fire and desire what? So it's like, okay, okay, you seek the fire, and now he, Vendrick's making the same questions Aldia has. Because again, both were trying to get to the, the same point, and they kind of diverge because of methods. But they seem to both be in similar, somewhat similar places. Find the crown and your find the crowns in your own answer. If it's if it's desire, like if you desire something, seek crowns. Like you're gonna if you're doing that, you're gonna find a reason through this acquiring these crowns and getting your own answer. The power of ancient kings dwells in cr the in crowns that are proof of them. So it's like okay, these ancient kings have powers that whether they knowingly or didn't were imbued into these crowns. And Vendrick is sort of saying that with these crowns we can use them for some purpose. He doesn't elaborate on what, but it'll help you on figuring out your desire of what. So he's like seek hardship. Okay, so keep going through these problem these troubles. Um one who seeks fire, one who wants to be king. So you want to be the the fi the linker. Whether you really want to or not doesn't matter, but this is sort of your goal. Okay, we'll get the crowns, and I'm going to help you along with that. 
And then he puts it, I am a clown, a pitiful clown, unaware of my own foolishness, a transient vessel, a soul of falsehoods, consequently desires to throw away a life of, of falsehoods and desires hardship, huh? Are you also a clown, or... So the idea being is that, okay, we're, we're a transient vessel, vessel being, like in this part, a, bo a body, a soul of falsehoods. We don't know that the dark soul yeah. is our real soul. Our bodies aren't our real bodies. There's human form isn't really us. So the idea is that, okay, we want to throw away all of the, the, these falsehoods and these lies and everything that we're dealing with, and we decide we're going to go through, through all of this. And it's like, okay, well, then what's the point? Because, like, he tried to do that. He tried to figure out, like, get through it all and go above the lies and become sort of enlightened and see where he's ended up. The whole time he wasn't realized he was being used. Um, are you another such fool? And he's like, so are you also the clown? So now, and then finally he says, again, this repeat of the question, what is it you desire? I can no longer see anything. He has to ask us these questions on what we desire because he's now in a point where he, he couldn't even discern that his wife was used, that his beloved wife was just using him. So there's no point in him trying yeah. to infer or trying to, from his own judgment, figure it out. Because he, he clearly is a terrible judge of character. Uh, yeah. And then we have... Seeker of fire, conqueror of dark. I too sought fire once. With fire, they say, a true king can harness the curse. A lie, but I knew no better. Seeker of fire, you know not the depth of dark within you. It grows deeper still, the more flame you covet. Flame, oh, flame. I am king of this wretched, unraveled kingdom. I subdued the giants and claimed their strength, so that I might step closer to fire. Drang Lake will fall, the fire will fade, and the souls of old will re-emerge. With dark, unshackled, a curse will be upon us, and men will take their true shape. One who seeks fire, have you overcome the dark? I too saw fire once. With fire, be the one who controls the curse, thus the one to be king. With the power of fire, it's like fire is going to control the curse because it's going to stamp out all the dark with its beautiful light and all that. And again, he's unaware it was nothing but a lie. One who seeks fire, you should know the depth of your dark. The further you chase fire, the deeper you d the, do the dark. Fire, fire. So the closer we get to fire, our shadow gets longer and deeper. So when you're in like far away from fire, you're just in the dark. You're just trapped in this world full of undead. It's like... You don't really get to notice the dark that's in you. You're kind of dealing with all these problems ahead of you. And you think the darkness is all external, because you know it's everywhere around you. You got this undead, you got this, the problem. But then when you start seeking the fire, what, he's, what Vendrick's getting at is that he came to realize, as he got to the fire, that no, it wasn't that there was all this evil, dark, external darkness all around him. The dark comes from within him, from within all of them. And the closer he was getting to the fire, the more he was realizing that this, this shadow of dark was getting longer and longer, and the metaphorical idea is that okay the bigger you go for the fire the more stronger dark is going to end up becoming the more we try to keep things going it's stagnating out of control and it's just making the rebound so much harder because the wor world is just not it should have gone through this transit national transition a long time ago and as he puts it, I, I am king, king of this country that ended up crumbling to pieces. I subjugated the giants and took away their power to acquire further power and approach fire. So that for whatever reason, Vendrick needed the power of golems, and he built the castle and all that. Presumably, it was to help him excavate and find the first flame, I suppose. So, and then he makes a point of, a country falls, fire comes apart, souls of ancients regain their power, the dark removes the shackles and becomes a curse, man is to their proper form. So... His point is not like this will happen. It's already happening in his time. That's why he, we're going to the past when he has locked himself here and he was still sane. His point is that there's this general state that's been happening where a country falls, fires, comes up, fires come apart, the souls of ancients have regained their power, which happens all the time. The dark removes the shackles, has become a curse, and man is to their proper form. Like, this is all the stuff that's the current state of the universe. And much like Aldia, Vendrick has realized what's going on and what the truth is. And this is sort of the exposition to re-explain those who didn't get the subtlety of one. Seeker of fire, 
I see you've subdued another foul creature. One of the father of the abyss spawn. That confounded quintessence of humanity. The abyss once had form, but then dissipated. And yet traces of its existence endured. Each fragment, thirsting for power, spread dark with no relent. My dear Chandra was one such fragment. A feeble, tiny thing that thirsted for power more than any other. Driven by insatiable lust for a worthy vessel. Okay, so one who seeks fire, another one pays for their works. The former master of an abyss, humanity incarnate, they are vestiges of that. So the idea is, of course, Banis was basically this big bag humanity monster. You know, he's the sor, he's this dark sorcerer. He has, he has like his gaunt humanity crazy, and he was a pretty tough boss. So it's like, okay, these are the vestiges of when his humanity split up after we we defeated him in his soul. Um, an abyss once took form, eventually collapsed. Again, referencing this, it merely left fragments of it. So again, both the abyss and his soul ended up fragmenting. They nevertheless are things that just want power. They eternally spread dark. The one I called my queen was another of them. That tiny, tiny, that frail, tiny fragment. It consequently hungered for stronger power. It sought a vessel for power as it craved. So again, this capacity, this vessel concept that's being brought up. Nishandra's like, okay, Vendrick ultimately didn't have the capacity. But again, the, the, point, the point being made by Aldia and, and Vendrick's soul is that, you know, this is kind of the irrelevant, that's not the way to frame it. But for Vendrick, for Nishandra it is, because she needs someone who has the vessel, who, has, who can be a worthy vessel for the power of the first flame in order for them to get to it so that way she can get to it. That's out of her desire for power. Um, and one of the things that is being point one of, one of the interesting things is that Vendrick here is saying how oh they're all like these awful things that seek and they spread dark and stuff but it's sort of interesting is that it's he's sort of saying this out of bias because like Nishandra wants everything for power as he figures out but like all the others were for the most part pretty well let's see when we go through all of them Alsana was just wanted to be she was afraid so she just wanted to be by her king she never did anything bad or evil or wrong yeah she just kind of was there for... Initially, she didn't really was there because she loved him. She was there because he was strong. When it came to Nadalia, I think her name was, she was there after the king was already gone, and then she kind of just yeah. squatted there because it's like, fuck, I don't have my strong king. So she didn't really cause any real problems either. She just sort of squatted in there. She's not like out like, oh, I'm going to spread the dark over the universe. And then there's Alana who, you know, yeah, she wants to have her like day of reckoning vengeance, but you know, she's kind of pissed because like some people kind of just came in, killed her king and destroyed their kingdom for like no good reason. Oh, oh wait, I'm sorry. You want blood of a dragon because it's going to give you magic powers or some shit. So she's not, like, just kind of doing this because, mwahaha, I'm evil darkness. So, like, Von Venclad is, like, saying, like, oh, they do all this stuff. It's like, y y dude, you got, like, scorned by your one girl, and now you're kind of blaming, like, you're stereotyping them all, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, get over it. You're a terrible judge of character, Vendrick. I do love that that's, like, the thing. He's like, she was so beautiful. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, just trust just trust the random stranger who tells you that monsters are coming and she's pr because she's pretty. Fire came to be, and with it disparity. Heat and cold, life and death, light and dark. Dark was seen as a curse. Shadow is not cast, but born of fire. And the brighter the flame, the deeper the shadow. Inherit fire and harness the dark. Such is the calling of a true leader. So what he's saying is, once fire was born and it brought disparity, heat and cold, life and death and light and dark, dark is called a curse. But a shadow is born only if there's fire. So his point is, you know, we call it a curse and we, with this negative connotation, but the truth of the matter is, it's just a consequence of a fire. It's, a, there's light, so there's dark. And yeah. I've talked about this before, is that fire created disparity, so there's differences. So this is a natural part of the world. It's not this terrible, abominable an anomaly in the universe. So this is just sort of the natural way of how things were going to be. Eventually the fire was going to fade and whatever and power it had was going to be chewed up by the dark. So Gwyn and the gods were just unlucky because they didn't find the dark soul before the um they didn't find the dark soul first and then the pygmies ended up doing so. That's all it really is. <laughs> and Gwyn never forgave anyone for it. <laughs>
Inherit fire and harness the dark. The one who accomplished that for sure would be, and then it kind of goes dot dot dot, and the localization infers that it's the calling of a true leader. But the idea would be that take the fire and control the dark. You, you just kind of take them together in one way. Maybe that would be the really the true king. I and mean, this is sort of done with the Lord of Hollows ending, in that things are so fucked up that we just kind of kind of we'll take the fire, and then we're gonna just take control of the dark. And, and and then we're going to ease the universe. We'll actually be able to control the universe properly and ease it to its proper place, basically. So that's sort of the point. That's sort of like the, the foreshadow for what Dark Souls 3 is going to go with. So that's sort of what all they're getting at. There's nothing too big. It's just sort of like, oh, you know, if only I could have done this. One could have day, somehow fire will like fade trying. and dark will become a curse. Men will be free from death, left to wander eternally. Dark will again be ours, and in our true shape, we can bury the false legends of yore. Only, is this our only choice? Seeker of fire, coveter of the throne. Seek strength. The rest will follow. Okay, so this is when we have all three of the, the crowns, and then Vendrick is like goes, Woo! and he like turns into like a super crown. Um... And this is sort of where we kind of get to the point of what Vendrick's saying is, eventually fire ceases and dark becomes a curse. Man is released from death and acquires eternity in the form of the dark we once obtained. The story of falsehood ends. So it's like, okay, this is what's been happening. It's like, fires goes out. We have this curse. We have eternity as undead. And we have, you know, the form, and he basically says explicitly now, this, like, the hollow form is the form of the dark that we once owned. And, of course, this is built upon again when we see the pygmies, who the pygmies, they have this more ape-like qualities, but they otherwise look very much like hollows. But, what is our proper form? Vendrick doesn't seem to have the same, he doesn't seem to have a answer in the same degree as Aldia, perhaps. Or if he does, he doesn't, isn't forthright with it. But the idea is, okay, what is our proper form? Is it to be in the guise of human, quote-unquote, or is it the guise of a hollow? Um, that's a big question that we are supposed to answer. One who seeks fire, one who wants to be king, you should have the power in your hands. So it's not just seek strength, it's you should have the power in your hands. Boom, and then he creates the crown. So now you have the power in your hands. And if I recall correctly, this crown allows you to... I think it, negate, it negates the hollowing to some extent, It correct? stops you hollowing, yeah. Yeah. So basically, Vendrick t has used the power of the crowns to sort of put back the curse while you wear it. You're now freed from that burden of you're you just doing this because you want to not go mad, which was our motivation from the beginning of the game. Everything is now and so as you desire. Whatever choice you make on this mission is entirely up to you. He's given us now the freedom to make that choice. Now, it doesn't play out that much well because, you know, we, we are on rails and we have to go through this mission until we're yeah. allowed to give an answer. But that's kind of the idea that what Vendrick is getting at, is that I went through all these problems. I couldn't... I've lost. I don't know the answer, honestly. But you know what? You think you got it. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's get rid of your worry about hollowing, at least. And then you can really make that choice now, free of any influence of anything else. There's no, it's only going to be up to you. And finally, now we get to go to the the finale, which we get to... Everything <laughs> finally gets explained, for the most part. Sort of, yeah. My journey is already complete. My name is Shanalot. The dragon gave me this name, for I was born with none. I was born of dragons, contrived by men. By ones who would cause and fate herself. They are the ones who created me. But they failed. I did not come out as intended. Fate would not be bested. And men were cursed once again. If you proceed, Nashandra will come after you. Knowing that you will take the throne and link the fire. She covets the first flame and the great soul. Put Nashandra to rest. So, my travels have already ended. My journey, like, she's, she's completed her journey. My name is Shanalot. One of the few not name changes. I'm actually shocked. Um, it's the name that Dragon gave to me who was born without a name. So, around the time Olya created the ancient dragon, they also created this, this, ha this cr half dragon crossbreed Shanalot. 
and she didn't have a name. So when they were in the when she was in the shrine, the dragon gave her a name. I'm a child of dragons born via man. So basically, she was an artificially created half dragon. Um, they created a dragon, so like, let's create a half dragon. <laughs> yeah, it's like okay. But um, those who once tried to surpass um, tr established karma, they gave birth to me. So again, this reference to karma. And like I said, the idea of the karma here is referring to... They're trying to overcome what Gwyn established for... What, what, what has happened as a consequence of Gwyn fucking with the universe. But they failed. However, those expectations reached an impasse. I was a flop. So something went wrong with this creation, and she was she ended up not being what they wanted in order to try to surpass the karma. Maybe they thought maybe they could become half dragon hybrids, and that would get rid of the curse or something to that extent. The karma goes around even now, and man continues to be captured. So there's this terrible line where it says the men were cursed once again, as if somehow like there was no curse, then she was created, and boom, curse came back yeah. suddenly. Yeah. No. It continues to be captured. They, it was always around. She was supposed to be a potential fix, a, a solution to it. Didn't work out. The problem of undeath is still a problem. If you proceed beyond here, Duna Chandra shall attack you for becoming the one, um, for becoming the one who arrives and inherits the king's seat. So the idea is that the Chandra needed us to go through all this because Vendrick, he went in and he locked the door behind him to keep her and keep all of this stuff from going wrong. It seemed like she at first thought things were going to plan because there's this line where it says her her face was as still as her portrait when she heard about him disappearing. Um, yeah. And the Japanese is actually just saying that while the whole royal government's in chaos because their king suddenly up and left... She was the only one standing there smiling, basically, quietly smiling while all this chaos was going on. So she was completely okay with this at first. But it's obvious from her dialogue and things that now that she's learned she's being outright obstructed, this isn't going at, at all how she wanted. She probably expected Vendrick to go in there because he was going to go in there. He finally had the power and the ability and the worth to link the fire. Instead, he's completely obstructing her from anyone linking the fire. So she's going to now attack us once we do everything. We've got the resonance, so we've got the so and she can take that from us. We've killed the what's it called? The the watcher, the guardians, Vendrick's guardians yeah, that are helping. Yeah, throne watcher and throne defender. Yeah. So it's like, okay, you've basically killed all these things. You're weak right now after fighting these things and going through all this. She's going to basically come in, attack us, kill us, take our take the take the resonance whatever that is per se exactly. And then she's going to use it to again hop not hop over the small fucking hole. <laughs> and and get to the throne so she can get to the first flame. And what she's saying here is because having the great soul of the fire of beginning in her hands is her desire so it's not just she wants the flame of the beginning and she wants she covets the first flame and the great soul she covets the the great soul of the first the first fl of the first flame it belongs to the first flame and this is a clear reference to again the soul of cinder the the the, the lord of the old the soul of the lord of the ultimate lord of cinder the ultimate king per se is what she covets. She doesn't just want any strong king. She wants the the strongest, the great king, as was called with Gwyn back way back when. Now again, that's not a very complicated motivation. It's just she's power hungry. But um, who knows what she was go what she was gonna do when she got there? Whether she was gonna take the power, or what she was gonna do with it. But it's like okay, presumably it's not good because she's a power hungry monster. Grave undead. You have proven yourself to me. Now, be one with the dark. Okay, you've gone through all the system we've set up for you. All of this stuff that was done to, to get you strong enough so you can get to this point. Okay, now, like, now you can, like, die. Now, thankfully, in Dark Souls, death is not always canon, so, like, we can go through the fight as yeah. many times before we have our canon encounter where she attacks us and we kill her in response, and it's like, okay, YOLO. After that, Aldi appears. Many monarchs have come and gone. One drowned in poison, another succumbed to flame. Still another slumbers in the realm of ice. Not one of them stood here. As you do now. You, conqueror of adversities. It was your answer. 
One, once many kings appeared, one who was swallowed by fo- poison, one su- sunk into fire, and one sleeps in a frozen land, without reaching this place, as you alone have. The one that passed the trials. It's time to give an answer. So I know there's this idea that maybe, um, like, the, the crowns were, like, past potential fire linkers, and that Vendrick wasn't the first to do this, but, no, it's the idea is, like, no one's ever gone through and been to this point on the fire linking, like Vendrick and now you have. But you're the only one that's gone through all these trials. You've now beaten Nishandra. It's time you're at the the precipice of making your choice. You gotta now tell us what is it you want out of it. What is it you really want? And now with Vendrick's aid, we can do that independent of our us us worrying about. Well, you know, I'm kind of going insane. So this is like this option or nothing. I lost everything, but remain here patiently. The throne will certainly receive you. But the question remains. Would you tell me? He says, I lost everything and then continued to wait. The throne will probably welcome you, but the karma is so it's not like but the question remains, like but the karma is yeah. so he's still concerned about the whole consequences of the fire and everything that Gwyn has done. So if you're just gonna link the fire, what is that going to accomplish? So so he finally asks Light, dark, or something else entirely. And this gets to his point. Now, in the general ending, when we just take the throne and we're going to go on the dark or light ending, the Emerald gives us a narration explaining, basically, that we're just going to repeat. We're just going to have the same thing happen as Dark Souls 1 to Dark Souls 2. You who link the fire. You who bear the curse. Once the fire is linked, souls will flourish anew. And all of this will play out again. It is your choice to embrace or renounce this. Great Sovereign, take your throne. What lies ahead, only you can see. One who links the fire, one who takes over the curse in their body. If you link the fire, the souls will propagate again and the same thing will repeat. To desire it, to refuse it, it's for you to decide. Once one to be king to your throne, only you see what's beyond it. So the the problem we have here is, of course, the souls will propagate again, and the same thing will repeat. So the idea seems to be that it's brought up throughout the game repeatedly that the four great ones souls are sort of acting on their own, and they're continually, even in death, their wills are continuing to seek the things they did in life. Gwyn, obviously, his soul would became like became this source of like creating lava in this pl- lava plateau as described by the developers. You have obviously Isleth as the forgotten sinner. You have the uh, Nito as the rotten who's continuing to kind of just stow away in like sort of isolation. And then you have Seath who's continuing to try to desperately obtain what he lacked, what he lacked his scales. All of them are continuing to act. Obviously the power of disparity and the souls of the light soul and everything that is related will grow weaker when fire fades but now that you're linking the fire you're they're gonna all basically fill up again they're gonna propagate again and we're gonna they're gonna go out and do the same thing you've you've gathered them all but they're gonna go out and they're gonna do the same and we're all gonna go through this again now the other option of course is to take the dark which is why she says okay it's for you to decide whether you're gonna take up this pointless task or you're gonna refuse it and once you do that we're gonna go and like the cough thing it's gonna be we enter the age of dark aldia however says, like, you know, what if we, like, leave the fire and let it kind of die off on its own? There is no path. Beyond the scope of light, beyond the reach of dark, what could possibly await us? And yet we seek it, insatiably. Such is our fate. So the localization is calling back to the the opening line in the cinematic when it's like such as your fate and stuff, but it's a very different thing that it's getting at here. There is no path, or, like there's no path ahead where even light doesn't reach and even the dark is lost. What's said to be there? So it's like where, where light doesn't. So it's like okay, when light's gone, it's not going to reach there. But everything has been framed around the idea that with the age of dark, we were going to become the king who would lead it and bring it about. But hey, what if there's no leader? So even the dark is kind of lost. It has no one to guide it or bring it anywhere. Okay, what's going to happen there? What's said to be there? But seeking it is for sure the trial imposed by us. So we've gone through all these trials, all these hardships, all of this in the seek to overcome the karma, so so to say. But finally, finally, we are making a choice. We are imposing this trial, this hardship, 
one that we've decided for ourselves this is our trial the unknown of what's between light and dark what happens when you like reject the 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 becoming the lord of of cinder or dark this is where Aldia reveals he's an idiot because it's very obvious what would happen from the outside. Well, like you see it in the cinematic, you like you go out there and then the fires start going out in there. So it's like, okay, you're basically allowing the Age of Dark, but you're doing nothing to help guide and lead it on a p hopefully a organized order. So you're just letting you're basically saying, let's topple the government, but let's not establish a new government. Let's just let things be an anarchy. See what happens. And Dark Souls Three is basically a deconstruction of that. In that it's like, no, that's kind of stupid. You get Aldrich. <laughs> you get these, you, some, someone's, you know, well, that's, that's the answer. It's like, if you're not going to do it, who's to say you're going to like the person who will? You're going to let people like Aldrich, who don't have those moral quandaries, who are just like, yeah, I see an age of deep sea coming after this, baby. <laughs> like, kill the gods, fuck it, let's get this age of fire over with. Yeah. And he like he's he's all psyched. He's got his followers, his worshipers he's like we're going to lead the new fucking age. It's like, "Oh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe what Aldia was getting at was kind of stupid, you know, just a little, just a little bit." <laughs> um, and that's what and you got to give g give Dark Souls 2's developers credit. It takes a lot of cojones to essentially make when when the one of the biggest criticisms for the game is having a lack of a choice. And then they give you a second choice, which is a non-choice. <laughs> it's like, okay. But that's the main quest of the game. So I think we can summarize the game for the last five minutes because we've been going on for a while. We can basically summarize that the, the entire goal or the purpose and the role that the game is going through is basically you're, it wanted to examine things from the perspective of uh, it wanted to have a more human, like it wasn't going to be the story of you're going on a hero's journey, it was okay, let's repeat the hero's journey, but let's focus on the human element um, on, the, on trying to make your character important which is kind of hard when your character is silent and has barely any input in any choices up to the end so, yeah, so I think that's why they, um they lean very heavily on that with other NPCs to sort of let you project. Yeah. I think that was the idea. I think that was the intention. I don't think it worked as well as they were hoping for, though. But the idea was that okay, so you're a person who's doing these things because you have to. If circumstances have forced you into this position where, regardless of what, regardless of what you want, you kind of have to because what you want is to not go crazy or die, and the option is either. <laughs> <laughs> let those things happen or do these create go through this convoluted scenario that was designed this convoluted system that was designed to take advantage of you having to go through this stupid sh shit in order to just survive so and then the dlcs and everything kind of come to this collective whole where it's like well you 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 well what about what about you what do you want what do you think what is your ultimate choice in getting out of this and you can make that choice. And the Aldia provides the option, as the ultimate option, Aldia says, you know, let's just kind of like say, fuck it, let's just leave it all and, and see what happens. It, sure, we don't, sure, we, like the Age of Dark, we don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, it's not, it, it, you know, hey, we, we, at least we, ch at least we chose all the problems that went, you know, it's our, we can say it's our fault and choice. It's not something outside of our control. It's like, well, you know, that sounds all well and good for you personally, but, you know, the rest of the world kind of has to suffer because of your bullshit. <laughs> so, like, maybe, you know, give it a little bit more, th give, like, maybe think about it for five more seconds before you decide you're going to just YOLO it and completely throw out the established well reasons arguments. <laughs> for why things should be how they are. Um, so yeah, it beca it's, it's, this is sort of like the quest line. You can see that there's, there's a lot of, of consistency that was lost in the script. There's a lot of references to other things and stuff that ends up being lost or is harder to discern. There's, in general, it does seem to keep to the theme, but it's easier to be more precise in understanding what, what, why characters are saying specific things when you look at it from the Japanese version. Um, and it, it becomes especially important when we talk about, like, a lot, like, because it's a very simple plot overall, but the, when we're talking about sort of the deeper questions about will and leading, when people get into these debates, they should be understanding what is the characters are actually saying, what is their point, and what are they meaning in this context. So, like, when Dark Souls 3 came out, one of the things people said was that it's kind of ignoring Dark Souls 2 or saying Dark Souls 2 on some level isn't really canon. Like, it happened, but it also wasn't that important. But, like, what you've gotten at here is that Dark Souls 2 was sort of 
at the scholar version at least was to some degree setting up thematically Dark Souls Three. Yeah. Yeah. So what 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 happened was that it seems like one two they had no fucking idea what they were doing. <laughs> they were they were just slapping things at wall, saw what stuck, and then because yeah. between production problems and just it's got lots of problems and it just it's narrative and everything about it. What Dark Souls 2 has going for it, though, is that, especially with after the DLCs and things like that, is it started to figure out what it wanted to be as a cohesive whole, and it got some semblance of that, and that, as I said, I'm pretty sure Miyazaki was the brainchild to the central stuff, at least with the Aldia plotline, so far as... Once that was created, he was able to create the premise from which Dark Souls 3 is going to exist. Because, again, the whole promise of Dark Souls 3 is because Lothric decides he's not going to link the fire. And we, we learn that that's because Aldia told him, hey, he, he basically did the same thing he did with us. And he's like, hey, you know, let's just, you know, do this. This might be better. And being, because, you know, Aldia, to add to his layer of assholery, he had to start manipulating ins- an insecure, ch- sickly child. So, And, like, Dark Souls 2 is acknowledged in three drang lake is acknowledged as like the land to the far north so we'll talk about this more in the other plan podcast if it ever happens because i get to talk a lot about a few things but there are implications in two that set up for what three reveals about sort of the stagnant land like the lands that drift to drang lake uh, not to, to lothric and stag nade and all that and it seems to be this idea that the events of 2 take place even further north in Lordran and all that stuff. So that seems to be an acknowledgement. And there's there's and of course obviously countries and places are also acknowledged in 2. Like it seems like the play it seems like the problem was that in 2 the setting was so the stuff that happens in Drang Lake, the reason why everyone's forgotten things and all this stuff is because these humans and these countries are so far away from the original countries as it was. And without the gods' influence, like in, say, 3, when you have Irithyll and Lothric with Gwyndolin and all the surrounding countries, which are relatively nearby to it, um, these things have just sort of become perverted perversions of themselves. Like, you know, people have forgotten. But Dark Souls 3 tells us, okay, but some of these countries have finally gotten in contact now with, like, yeah, Mara, for example, has now gotten in contact. You have the Drang mercenaries, which seem to be serving on behalf of Sullivan slash Irithyll, and then they end up working for Aldrich at the cathedral and stuff like that. You also see evidence of, during the Second Demon War, that Sullivan had the Drang mercenaries as, like, his fighting force to help the Lothric army against the demons. So you see the bows and the shields of, like, of like the the covetous and all this other drang like equipment in the in the, among the corpses from where the war took place with the demons. So it's it's clear that Dark Souls Two is acknowledged. It's not like they retconned it out of existence. They just probably wrote around some of its idea. Like they tried to minimize. Like because Two was like let's have a reboot, but not. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that covers all of the main quests basically, and that I think that hopefully that gives people. I, I don't want to say a new appreciation for Dark Souls 2 because that makes me want to vomit, but um, um, a new a new understanding and um sympathy for Dark Souls 2. Um, for what it was, what it tried to be, what it could have been. And I think I think that's all. We, I think we should close out now and everything. Then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay.